All right, so we've got Dr. Avi, we've got Hailman. Um, he's a, I think a carnivore YouTuber would be a fair way to characterize him. They're gonna debate veganism. Might be about health, might be about ethics. We'll just see as we go. I'm just gonna unmute them now and then they'll be able to talk. Everyone else is muted. Hey, how are you? So, good, how are you? Um, so, what is your, what's your position that you'd like to defend, if I can? Um, well, what can I say? The vegan diet is trash. Um, it made me anorexic, destroyed my digestion. And, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> if the vegan, yeah, so your position is the vegan diet is trash and it made you anorexic. Is that your yeah. position? Or, okay. And by trash, do you mean just inferior to the omnivore diet? Uh, carnivore. Oh, the car inferior to the carnivore diet. Okay, yeah, but yeah, not necessarily mean. inferior to the... Okay. Do you, is it just an anecdote that you have for that, or is there any evidence that you have that a vegan diet is inferior in any way to the carnivore diet? Um, I've got various studies um, talking about the various different toxins in... Uh, plants and how they affect digestion yeah so when you talk about how they affect digestion is there any outcome that that's terminated in or is it just saying this is a toxin by this whatever criteria and this is what we speculate will happen yeah that's the thing there is no sort of health um there is no sort of health outcome yeah and um, the reason is sort of mechanistic stuff yeah, and, and the reason this is important is because when we look at these quote-unquote toxins and when we try to terminate them in outcomes, what we found is that a lot of these plants that have a lot of these quote-unquote toxins that was shunned mechanistically, when we look at the outcomes, they actually end up doing better. So a classic example was legumes. So legumes have these things a lot of people called anti-nutrients, and there was speculation that there would be problems with digestion because of it especially in elderly populations that couldn't digest very well. But the issue is when they actually looked at the outcomes, they actually ended up having the lowest low cause mortality when elderly populations ended up consuming legumes. So just because we have a mechanistic speculation all the time, many, many times, it turns out to be unreliable and it doesn't actually pan out for the health outcomes. So do you have any evidence in terms of any health outcome that you could point to to indicate that the diet you're advocating for is superior in any way? Or that the diet, um, no, or the vegan diet, really. is inferior. Uh, I, there, are, there are not, no health come out, no health outcome data that would suggest the vegan diet is inferior. It just hasn't. There's no studies yeah. that have been done, and uh, nor could I say that an all meat based diet would be superior either, because that hasn't been studied yeah. either. What I can say is from my own personal experience that. Um, vegan diet just didn't work out, and I have some yeah. mechanistic data to sort of explain why that happens. Well, we already we already covered the mechanistic data and why that's un that's very unreliable because there's mechanistic data. Me when if you accept mechanistic data as a way of terminating outcomes without actually testing outcomes, and if you accept expect accept anecdotes um, to the same degree, I mean, you could basically argue for literally any diet under the sun with that criteria. So I can get any vegan in here to say, you know, when I went vegan, what happened was, you know, I got all these health benefits. I grew taller. The size of my penis increased. I got more money in my bank account. I mean, these are all things that happened when I went vegan. So, you know, right. You see what you see the problem, right? It's just an anecdote. Yeah, but the thing is, I, I trust yeah. my own anecdote. Like, it's my life. If my health is failing on a vegan diet, then of course I'm going to eat meat again. Sure. It, yeah. Have you considered <laughs> that maybe you just? Yeah. Go ahead. Have you considered? Have you? Go, go ahead. Have you considered that you may have just done the vegan diet poorly, and on average, maybe this is something that actually is superior, or maybe you've done it. I mean, because here's the issue, like. You, when you say, I'm going to trust my anecdote, your anecdote is very, very, very unreliable on many, many factors. So the first factor your anecdote is unreliable on are, is on diseases that take have high latency periods. 
So diseases that have high latency periods are things that, in anecdote, is very hard to get at because you would have to do a diet for a very long time in order to assess risk. And that's why these studies measuring outcomes are very useful because just you may feel good or you may have a certain feeling with a given diet, that doesn't actually tell you anything about high latency period diseases. So that's just one of the many issues with an anecdote. Well, all I know um, is the current, my current state of health is going to be the best indicator of my, my future health. And on a vegan diet, my health was going down the toilet, and so was many other people's. Can you just tell me how, in what ways, your health was going down the toilet and how you know that your health is, and your future health is? In yeah, so the first thing was digestion. So obviously, I was eating a lot of... I was pr I pretty much tried everything on the vegan diet, all the different foods you can think of, supplements as well. There was some. When you say digestion, what do you mean? Uh, your ability to absorb, digest, and assimilate food and the nutrients. And that's been assessed by what? Like you've had blood work or what? Yeah, yeah. And what were you? What was your blood work? Like what basically, were the my kidneys. Um, well, fuck, they, my kidneys yes. weren't really filtering properly. Uh, my As GFR, measured by what, a high, a high creatinine? Yeah, yeah. A high, well, that's very, and, then what, and you went, what did your doctor say about your high creatinine? Oh, you said uh, it could be dehydration or something, but. Yeah, that's, that doesn't, that's not usually, unless there are certain specific preconditions with prior kidney disease. Um, the only time I'm aware of like diets affecting your creatinine level and thus the calculated GFR is if you have pre-existing condition, conditions for your kidney and you also consume like a lot of protein on top of that can do it. But other than that, it's really not related to the diet. Aside from well, that well, specific actually, context. It, is, yeah. it actually is related to the diet because How so? one, one of the biggest um, problems with, with kidney disease and uh, kid, uh, kidney stones, and essentially 80% of kidney stones are from calcium oxalate, which can be produced by the body, but can also come from plants and oxalate heavy rich foods like spinach and uh, uh, various grains. Yeah, but there's no, water. but again, there's no, the only outcome based evidence that, uh, that oxalate, that kidney stones that are calcium oxalate actually form in higher rates, or kidney stones in general form in higher rates, are some data on ketogenic diets. But um, we're not, but this wasn't, but again, this is tangential because that wasn't your issue anyway. You, were, you didn't have a kidney stone, did you? I didn't have a kidney stone, but I had. Then uh, why are you mentioning, then why are you mentioning calcium oxalate kidney stones? The issue was a tangential issue. Yeah. The issue is you had a lower GFR. It wasn't a kidney stone. Well, so that's, actually, that's just the tangential. That's just the tangential point. Yeah, we're well, talking uh, actually. Um, oxalate can affect the um, kidney filtration by way of, of course it, of, of course, sure, of course it can. But that wasn't what you had. Well, right? I, don't, I can't say I know that for sure, but what I can say... When people have a kid, I can tell you as a... Listen, I can, when people have a kidney stone, they know it. It is incredibly painful. Yeah, I didn't have it's one of the, yeah. These These oxalates are microscopic. Okay. You don't have to have a kidney stone to have oxaluria. That's okay. Now you're talking about something else. Now you're talking about high ox. Now you're talking about these small degrees of precipitation. So you can yeah. speculate that that's the case. But again, is there? So then I'm just going to ask you: Is there any evidence that you have that a vegan diet increases the rate of this happening? Um, well, it's just it's pretty. It, you just put two and two together, really. There's a oh, no, that's not how this works. No. And you know, if you overconsume spinach, then you probably increase your likelihood of getting kidney stones. And, I, and in fact, in a lot of kidney stone clinics, they will tell you to reduce your consumption of, of oxalate-rich foods. They'll get you to go on a low oxalate diet. Yeah, if someone has had prior, look, if you had prior oxalate kidney stones, then sure. If you're talking about something for, which doesn't apply to you, and you don't even know that you've had these microscopic small ca calcium oxalate precipitation degrees, and even if you did, um, 
you would just exclude oxalate-rich food from a vegan diet. You can you can have a vegan diet that is low in oxalate. So it's just tangential on three different factors. So the first factor is number one, this doesn't even you have no evidence that this actually applies to you. Number two, even if it did apply to you, it wouldn't follow that you shouldn't go on a vegan diet from that. It would just follow that. No evidence that it applies to me. I actually do. I got an ultrasound. I got mm -hmm. my kidney function tested. Mm -hmm. And when what I was drinking oxalate-rich foods, my kidney function improved. And furthermore, when I... No, 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 that's not... No, 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 no. That's not evidence. So what, here's what would be evidence. What would be evidence is, A, if you had an ultrasound, the ultrasound actually found a stone. B, if you actually did have a stone. C, um... The, well, the other issue is just because your GFR improved when you went on less ox oxalate-rich foods, it doesn't actually mean that was the oxalate causing that. It could just be that there was a covariant that... that hold on, hold, hold, hold on. I'm saying that there's some evidence to suggest it. That's not no, it's but it's not suggested by it because you yes, don't indeed. because the most common the most common reason I can tell you the most common reason for a lower GFR is hydration. It has nothing to do with oxalate. Yeah. The, you're going, you're going, you're you're hearing hoof prints, you're hearing hoof beats, and you're thinking about zebras instead of horses. The oxalate most common cause. Kidney function. Yes, they can. It's a possible. From the diet, sure. My kidney function sure. Improves. Listen. Yes, sure. That we can grant that. We can grant that. But you understand that it's the most likely explanation for that is still a change in hydration status. Well, actually, unless I'm you can point. More hydrated on a vegan. <laughs> and how how do you know that? Did because you look at in, did, in, um, fruits no? And that's your speculation. Was, did, did was there a specific gravity of your urine that was tested on a vegan diet and and, and now? Uh, okay. I mean, that's how you would check. You can check the specific gravity of your urine. I mean, you wouldn't do it by saying, "Well, there's more water in, in fruits, so I'm going to speculate that I was more hydrated." That's not how you do it. That's not that's not going to get you anywhere. I don't so here's what kind of irrelevant here's anyway. the case. The, the thing is, I stopped mm -hmm. oxalate rich foods, my kidneys stopped hurting, and right. But you understand, but you sure, but but you understand that just because you stop the oxalate rich foods doesn't because you stop the oxalate rich foods. The most common, based on our understanding, the most common reason a GFR can improve is, and GFRs do improve after the after they're lower, is because of hydration. That is the by and look by far the most common reason that changes. It's not because of this microscopic oxalate precipitation. It's that's very that's a lot lower. It can happen, but it's a lot lower on the chain in, th in terms of common explanations for why or likely explanations for why that happens. And moreover, you didn't. You have. Do you even have a history of having any kidney stones at all? Do you have you ever had no. a kidney stone? Okay, so you ha you have no history of having a kidney stone. I, I just don't see where you would, why you would speculate that this was this microscopic calcium oxalate crystallization rather than the most common explanation by and large. There's a few reasons. One, the most uh, prominent reason was because I did get an ultrasound and it did show um, increased echogenicity of the right kidney, which usually highlights um, calcium deposits as well. Uh, the Did second, they see any calcium deposits? What was the read of the ultrasound? They didn't see. They just saw increased echogenicity, which could mean calcium. It could mean increased fat. But it usually just means inflammation. Yeah, I mean, so that's very inconclusive. I mean, we, we, I can, we can posit your kidneys were inflamed. We can posit your kidneys had fat. We can posit there was increased echogenicity. That's a nonspecific finding. Right. So they didn't find any, did they find any focal echogenicity, the increased echogenicity that would be consistent with the calcium stone? So like we're looking at a stone, focal echogenicity, increased focal echogenicity, or was there just diffuse increased echogenicity? Did you just have ATN? I mean, sure I mean, if it was just specific. right, I mean, you could have just had a cutubular necrosis or something, like for all I know, and that could account for increased echogenicity. I mean, it doesn't sound like there was this focal increased echogenicity that you would see with a calcium stone, was there? 
Because then they see, uh, it would be suggestive. The read, I'm look. The read would be very suggestive of the stone if that was the case. Well, I know I learned I didn't have stone. Uh, I'll just say that I wasn't a hundred percent sure I had an oxalate problem, but I had symptoms. You had symptoms of what? Uh, oxalate toxicity. What were those symptoms of oxalate uh, toxicity? Pain in kidney, rashes, digestion issues. Itchiness. Yeah, but you know those are things that that can be caused by so exactly. many different things. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely I mean, like, if this is why it's not being talked about, it's because it's it's not really being studied all that much. No, it's it's kidney oxalate stones are very well studied. It's not that they're not studied. It's just that there's no there was no evidence for you having this. When you look at diffuse echogenicity, I'm really skeptical that there was focal echogenicity. It would be the read would have been very suggestive of an oxalate stone or a kidney stone, if that was the case. But the point, the point being here, is that even if we grant all of this, like this is, I mean, you would. The point being is that this is an anecdote and really doesn't make the case for even if you want to, even if everything is granted, which I'm not going to grant. This would just end up being an anecdote, and it wouldn't make the case that the vegan diet is somehow inferior. It would just mean you had a bad experience on it. So, again, what's the what's the evidence? Like, do you want studies or something? Yes, that's exactly what you're being so asked. There's so many. For. There's about twenty studies that I have that show that. Would you like to? Let's. We can go through them one by one. Quite a few nutrients. All right. Do you want to? Do you want to present them? Yeah. Just give me a sec. Am I able to post in the chat or something? Okay. Nutrients you can't get from plants. Okay. So there's vitamin A. Mm hmm Basically fat soluble vitamin. Mm -hmm. Wait, Not wait, wait. Level. Let's go one let's go one by one. So you have your so vitamin A. Do you you gonna post something there? There you go. Okay. That's not one by one, that's four studies, but <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there a specific point in these studies that you would like to point out? I mean, yeah, are you, so what's, what's the, what's, yeah, what's the, we don't convert, um, beta carotene to vitamin A very well. Mm -hmm. Most of us. Mm -hmm. Are you aware, are you aware of the conversion rate of beta carotene to vitamin A and how much beta carotene one would need to get RD? I think it was something like the 50% of, uh, people in the UK. You think it was what? I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you. I don't remember exactly. I haven't read these studies. I just kind of keep them there. So you're posting studies. Are you posting studies that you just haven't read? You just keep them there and post them? No, I've read them. I just don't remember them. Oh, you don't remember. Okay. So sort of remember basically, just, yeah. Basically, you don't you don't need a whole you don't need nearly as much as people make it out to be. Um, and here's the data for that. So um, one can always one can always go for there's different conversion rates for different foods. If, but the easiest way to do it is just to take a multivitamin that has beta carotene, synthetic beta carotene. Twenty five milligrams will be enough, even if you have about um, a seventy five percent impairment in conversion you'll get RDA of retinol without a problem, and here's the data for that. Yeah, but what if, um, what if you don't want to take pills? If, if you don't want to take pills, natural. yeah, if you, don't want to, if you don't want to take pills, what you can do is there are certain foods that you can eat, like sweet potatoes that have a fairly high conversion rate. Um, so sweet potatoes, yeah, you would need like one or two cups. 
sweet potatoes yeah, like, are full of they're super high in oxalates they're dangerous potentially okay do you have any evidence that like someone like me would not be able to eat sweet potatoes i would have a negative reaction the other option would be carrots um let's see yeah carrots would be another option um also there's there doesn't seem to be any harm by taking How many this uh, multi you have to eat yeah. to get the adequate amount of of vitamin a you would have to eat an absorbent amount it would be realistic it wouldn't be that it wouldn't be that actually it wouldn't be as absorbent as people make it out to be and we can go through the calculus um but more to the point, I just want to, before we circle back on that, I just want to point out that there's actually no harm in consuming 25 milligrams of synthetic beta carotene. When in that dose, then there's no increase in health and mortality. Then what? Then why isn't it bioavailable? Well, it, it is bioavailable. Well, it, it's, it's obviously not for some reason. If, well, if most no, of the it, population it, can't. It, it, it is by, in other words, if you take 25 milligrams of synthetic beta carotene, you'll be able to convert enough retinol. And there, w there wouldn't be any side effect of that. There wouldn't be any increase in all cause mortality. And there's no evidence for a problem of morbidity either. Uh, it's, it's just a bit iffy, you know, taking pills, you have to get from food. What? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You should be able to get everything you need. B12 is another example. Wait, 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 wait. Why do why do you have to get everything? Why do you have to get everything from food and not uh, a supplement? Because maybe just people want to eat. They don't want to take pills. It's it's, it's unnatural. Well, just because be something is un just because something is unnatural doesn't mean well, look, a diet. you you yeah. saying it's you saying it's not. You saying it's not natural doesn't follow that we sh someone ought or ought not do that. It could be that you, something is not natural and they ought to do it. It could be something... You're, it, you're saying that the vegan diet is a diet, right? I'm saying that... Well, yeah, I'm saying the vegan diet is a diet, but that doesn't mean it has to be a natural diet. Are you saying that a vegan diet is a complete diet where you can get all your nutrition from food? No, you naturally no, but non-naturally yes, which is why we I don't advocate for a natural vegan diet. I would be crazy to advocate for a natural vegan diet. So you agree that the vegan diet is a naturally diet without supplements? Wait, I agree that I agree that you cannot get all of your nutrients on a vegan diet without supplementation. Yes, I don't see a problem with that though. It could still be the case that a vegan diet with supplementation gets you where you need to go and could be healthier than the diet you're presenting. It doesn't, it doesn't mean, it doesn't follow that just because supplements may be needed from a diet that the diet is excluded from diets we should consider. Because it could be the case that we have a diet that requires supplementation yet results in better health outcomes than a diet that doesn't require supplementation and it would still make sense for us to go with the diet that does require supplementation in that case. So you simply pointing out that a diet may require supplementation doesn't get you to where you need to go. It doesn't make your case that it's inferior. But it is inferior because you just admitted that you can't get everything you need on a vegan diet. Well, well you know, when we're talking about inferior, well, if your measurements, listen, if your measurement of inferior is that metric, sure. But when people talk about inferior diets, what they generally mean is that they lead to problematic health outcomes with respect to another diet. So you're basically saying nature didn't do everything. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. So you're saying that nature um, didn't set humans up to eat a nutrient complete diet? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying I'm not making a claim about what nature set us up to do. I'm just saying I'm just saying that it could very well be the case, and I do think there's evidence to show that this is the case in some cohort. So nature that is wrong and you should take pills? Nature, in many cases, is quote-unquote wrong. And by wrong, I just mean leads to things that are less healthy and you should take pills. There are many examples of this. What? What is the definition sure. of health? 
Sure. So uh, one example in which nature is quote unquote wrong and you should take pills is if you get a bacterial infection. The right, the, the quote, on my view, the quote unquote right thing to do would be to take antibiotics and treat the infection. The natural thing to do, thing to do would be to let the infection kill you and die. So just because something is natural doesn't mean it is healthy. But in terms of diet, don't you agree that a healthy should eat their natural diet? No. No, I don't. I don't. I don't believe that at all. I think that's crazy. Actually, I think that's a crazy. I, I think that's a crazy belief. Um, I don't. Do think, I don't think like it follows. Should eat carb or plastic? I. I don't pills. think. No, that's not what I said. That's that's not what was said. What was said is it just doesn't follow something natural diet as part of evolutionary history. It doesn't so follow from that. that, that so you don't nature, in nature. No, I do believe in evolution. I think you're just misunderstanding what evolution selects for. Evolution isn't selecting for things that are going to generate long-term health. Evolution selects for things that are going to get you to where you need to go to reproduce. It just cares about. It just. It just cares about getting. Doesn't care about you surviving. It cares about you surviving to the point where you could reproduce and have an increased reproductive fitness. After that, it, evolution doesn't really care about you. Nature so doesn't what's care that? about you surviving. No, after excuse that's again that's not what was said. That's so I'm going to repeat what I said so you don't strawman me again. Evolution, what's going, what it selects for are things that are going to increase reproductive fitness. So you need to survive just to the point where you could reproduce, to the point where you could increase your reproductive fitness. After that, after that, nature doesn't actually care about your survival. As long as your reproductive fitness wouldn't increase, you can die, and it's totally fine. It's not going to select for things that are healthy for you. It's not going to select for a diet. You wouldn't actually expect an evolution to produce a diet that's going to be the optimal diet to live to long age and health. That is actually what you would expect evolution to not, to not produce. So what happens if an animal doesn't eat? Who... who uh, if so an animal doesn't eat, yeah, any like any, yes, uh, it would starve. Right. What is this? How? What's the relevance? So then, isn't diet related related to survival? Okay. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, look, look. Yeah. Okay. Look. The fact. The fact that no, 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 no. Listen. The fact that. One, the fact that one needs to consume in order to eat, it doesn't. You're, you're missing the point here. Yes, I'll I'll agree with you that if you you do need to eat something, but what I'm disagreeing with you is that the type of things that we would be expected to eat, if we look at if we base it on that which we evolved to eat, quote unquote, we would actually expect that to not produce optimal health outcomes. Based on our understanding of what evolution is, we would expect that to produce suboptimal health outcomes, because evolution doesn't care about you being healthy in old age. If you okay. are going to have an yeah yeah if you are going to have an increased amount of fitness to the point where you c can reach reproductive age and and reproduce at the expense of a at the expense of decreased health in older age, that would be selected for. Okay, do you have any other questions? I mean, I was answering your questions, but um, okay, so getting back on topic, so do you have any other evidence that we would need, um, we would have a problem getting our retinol? Uh, no, that was it. Oh, that was it. Okay, so that didn't, so you understand why that doesn't pan out, because we can easily, easily get our retinol um, just through a multivitamin. Uh, with uh, with the 25 milligrams of beta carotene is sufficient, even if we had a 75 percent impaired conversion rate. I'm uh, I'm questioning the bioavailability of that even. Okay, would you, would you like to go through the calculation? Oh, I'd like to see a study or some research showing the vitamin pills bioavailable. Sure, yes. we sure that's that's we can do that. Would you would you like that study? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. There is a study comparing different um, conversion rates 
of synthetic beta carotene. And it is a six to one conversion rate for beta carotene to retinol. One moment. What are you learning in this? Here's device? the problem here. Well, Adam can't hear you. Is there anybody in this debate, or are we the only? Yeah, we're the only two. So, if you look at this study, um, synthetic synthetic retinol has a six to one conversion. Just synthetic beta carotene has a six to one conversion rate. I posted the study in general. Daily consumption of Indian spinach or sweet potatoes has a positive effect on vitamin A stores. Results. If you look at 25 milligrams of beta carotene and you do a 6 to 1 conversion rate, we can go through the math right now. Fashion. Design. So it's 25 divided by 6 is 4.16 milligrams. And even if you assume you're only converting about 20, um, 25%, what you end up getting is 1.04 um, milligrams of retinol, which ends up being higher than the 900 micrograms RDA for retinol. So you say that we're 75% impaired on conversion of beta carotene to retinol, it still wouldn't make your case because we would still be able to convert more than our RDA at a dose of synthetic beta carotene that has not been shown to increase all cause mortality. No, I was just reading the study design. Okay, there's that. But what about... Um... Let's see. Heme iron. You can get heme iron. You can get heme iron on a vegan diet. How? Have you heard of the Impossible Burger? Yeah. But You're aware that has heme iron? That? That's toxic. Are you? Are you <laughs> why is it? How do you know that's toxic? Oh, just look at the ingredients. I'm pretty sure it's, it's been about associated it. with renal problems. And could you have evidence for that? I saw an article. Um, hang on, this is not possible. Is, it a peer, is this an article or a peer-reviewed publication? I'm just curious. I don't know. I just kind of heard about it. Yeah. I mean, I I'm just curious. First of all, just why why do you, why would one need heme iron? Are you talking specifically about refractory anemia that hasn't responded to iron supplementation? Um, the, the reason I say is because uh, I linked a study here. I can't remember what it says. I'll just have a look at it. Uh, dietary intake of iron status of German, German female vegans. Yeah, so a bunch of vegans were studied, female vegans in Germany, and they found that uh, they were considered iron deficient and actually... In my experience, a lot of vegans do look really, really pale. Why? Why would? Wait, wait. Why would it? Why would it follow from that that we would need heme iron? Um, because uh, we suspect that heme iron is more bioavailable than right. Iron. But why? Sure, sure. But why would it follow that they need heme iron? So again, like you can say that it's more bioavailable. That's fine. But, but again, if you're looking at cases of vegans that just consume low amounts of iron, that's usually fixed by just supplementing iron. And there's technology yeah. now at this point, there's technology now to get vegan heme iron. So it's really just, it's really yeah, just a non-starter all, on, all, on all grounds. But then you admit again that you can't get uh, another nutrient, heme iron. Well, no, you, 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 no, you can. No you, no, you can. You can. You How? can get there's vegan there's vegan heme iron. You don't know you do you are you aware of this? There's vegan heme iron that exists now. 
I don't know. How, I don't know how it's animal iron. There's wait, wait. So two points. Number one, you need to make the case that we would need heme iron. Well, just point I number just two. Well, no, well, no. That, in in iron. that conclusion doesn't follow. The conclusion that you would need heme iron as opposed to any other form of iron doesn't follow from your study. And number um, two, you can get heme iron on a vegan diet. How? <laughs> the Impossible Burger is a form of heme iron. What it is has it made heme iron. It's, it's made of wheat protein. protein. Okay. It's it's not an animal product, but it, it basically there there is a specific modified organism that is commensal to a plant that actually makes heme that actually heme iron, and it doesn't come from animal. Believe it or not, not all forms of heme iron come from animal products. Mm. Well, <laughs> the Impossible Burger is pretty toxic, anyways. So. How do you know? How do you? How do you know that? Just look at the ingredients. Would you read that? What, what ingredient? What ingredient is toxic? I'll just have a look at it. What ingredient is toxic? Okay, so it's got wheat protein, mm -hmm. coconut oil. That's toxic. Uh, how how do you know that's how do you know how do you know coconut oil is toxic? It's antimicrobial. It kills cells. How do you know that that's toxic when consumed? You saying it's antimicrobial doesn't help your case. Well, yes, it does because it kills your your yeah. cells, your epithelial. Cells. Do you know what anti -mic do you know what antimicrobial means? Sorry, bacteria. Yeah, it kills it, it can kill bacteria. But okay, so is there any evidence that when the coconut well no, that can that can or cannot be good depending on which which ones they kill, and or it could be just neutral if it doesn't kill them in sufficient quantities. Also also coconut oil gets emulsified in the in the gut, in the stomach, long before it even reaches where most of your microbiome is in the colon anyway. It gets absorbed. It gets absorbed before it reaches where most of your microbiome is in the first place. So that's just an ignorance of anatomy. Yeah, but but the um. It, you well, no, 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 no. Listen, you're you pointing out that it's anti. Also matter you, as well. You, know, you it's not pointing just bacteria in your gut. You point in your mouth. Listen, it. I the bacteria in your mouth quickly regrow. You're not going to wipe out the bacterial colony of coconut oil. I got news for you. It would still. You don't. You don't even do that. Listen, you're not going to even do that with antibiotics. Like this. Do you have any evidence for this? Well, antibiotics are terrible. They decimate people's gut flora. Antibiotics. Antibiotics can decimate people's gut floras, but the mouth microbiota very quickly comes back. I can tell you that right now. Um, also, yeah, do you have, have, do you, do you have any it. evidence? Do you in what in, con in, co in toxic concentrations and what concentrations are you aware? Listen, here's the thing: you, when you claim something is toxic, you can't just make that claim. You actually have to show, like, okay, here's the ingredient, here's what the toxicity level is, here's the concentration, here here's how much they're consuming. You can't just say, oh, co coconut oil, that's toxic. No, it isn't. It is. It kills cells. Do you have any evidence? Do you, where's your evidence? It has salicylates. And salicylates have been associated just because, with inflammation just because, have cell-killing properties. Just because, something, just because something has salicylates doesn't make it toxic. People have, all about well, the it wouldn't have salicylates if it was meant for humans to eat. That's not true. We give salicylates to humans all the time. That doesn't mean it's not toxic. <laughs> hey, it doesn't mean it is. Doesn't mean it is. Doesn't mean it is toxic either. Do you have any evidence that it's toxic? You're making the claim here. Yes, yeah, salicylates. So what's what's the evidence? It. <laughs> what's toxic. the show me show me show me that the that the level of salicylate in the Impossible Burger is toxic. Well, I don't have that specific information. All okay, but you need, but you need, but you need that specific information. Also, oh, no. where are the, where are you saying? Also, where are you seeing the salicylates? They're in coconut, pretty sure. They're in all coconut oils. Uh, I don't know. There's very 
different cons. Okay, so that's so we're we're. Sorry. You're are you do you, wait 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 because there's no ingredient salicylate in the Impossible Burger. You're inferring it because it says coconut oil. So I'm just asking you: are, Is it all coconut oil that salicylate has? That that have salicylates? I uh, can't say, but I would assume I assume would have salicylates. I don't know that for sure, but I wouldn't consume it. Yeah. So anyway. here's the thing. I mean, it, it all depends on the concentration. Um, so salicylates in a low concentration will almost certainly do nothing. Anything, just almost, almost anything in a low concentration will do almost nothing or nothing. So you pointing that there's salicylate, what you need to do is show that there's a level of salicylate that is harmful, that to be to show that based on the amount of coconut oil and the amount of salicylate concentration in this coconut oil, consuming the X amount of the impossible burger will have this amount of harmful effect. Like that would be an argument you could run. What you yeah, can't, but I don't think that's something that nature intended for us to. I, do. That's that. Now you're just appealing to nature again. So appealing to nature isn't going to help you either. Again, it, nature intended. Nature didn't intend for us to go and be healthy into an old age. So Why you appealing to some, some things. Some things. Nature now food that actually. Believe it. Or, okay, you you're labeling. Okay, again, again, again. Again, the, what is toxicity is all made by the dose. So you are already assuming your conclusion and your premise. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You need to no, show that it, it's toxins. not. No, no, no. What makes something toxic, what makes something toxic, believe it or not, there are quote-unquote that are actually healthy in low doses. There are quote-unquote things that are thought to be toxins, and they find out that actually in low doses they're actually beneficial, and they're not toxins. <laughs> It's not that a toxin is a toxin, and that's just it. And you it's find contextual sort of based. Like on, it's very contextual based on the dose. Uh, an anti-nutrient or said toxin, but at the end of the that's day, what, it's, they're still a toxin. Yeah, no, we do, we do. No, 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 we do. Okay, well then, if that, that's how you want to define it, that's fine. But then it would also follow that we should be consuming them in low doses. What is that the more of it you consume, the more toxic it will become. That's Okay. okay, at some at some <laughs> levels, at some level, sure, but it actually doesn't follow at low levels. At low levels, it actually we don't see that relationship. There's always a level of anything that's not going to actually harm. Sure. Even cyanide, cyanide at at at, at low levels, you you produce you endogenously produce um, more cyanide that you would get from cyanocobalamin. At low enough cyanide, cyanide, you can take low enough amounts of cyanide and you would have no effect on you. Yeah, so what you need to do, to what, what, you need, what, you need, what you need to do, okay, I'm not talking about if there's a need to, no, that's not what we were talking about, though. We were talking about, look, you said we need, you said there's a problem with iron. This is how we were, got on this conversation. And I said, well, number one, you need to show why we would need heme iron as opposed to any other iron, because when vegans supplement with other iron pills, they can they get better. Number two, you need to show that it would be a problem for us to consume the vegan form of heme iron, and you haven't done that. Well, I, I can't say for sure that there is definitely a problem with, with iron. I'm saying I found these things to suggest that uh, vegans have problems with, with well no see but you're not you're misinterpreting what the study is suggesting so vegans there may be vegans who have problems with their iron content that's fine but that's not the question though the question is what happens when you give them elemental iron what happens when you give them iron supplements what happens when you give them more iron rich foods and the answer is usually they get better and if they somehow you have a really rare case of a vegan who doesn't get better who has this refractory anemia to all forms of supplementation and needs heme iron there are vegan sources of heme iron now you haven't made the case that that would have be problematic to consume well but i can make the case okay that can Again, you tell? Can you show me? Can you show me? Can you show me what concentration of salicylates are in coconut oil? Uh, no, I can't. Don't know. That's all okay. Right. Yeah, but that's. But here's the thing. That's really important because if you can't do that, then you. It's important because if you can't show me the concentration of salicylates that are in coconut oil, there's a harmful effect. Yeah, but there's no reason to consume it in order to get paid. Well, in this. Well, in this case, well, you can't well, no. get anyway. 
Well, in this case, there would be a reason to consume it if there's a this case of refractory anemia and someone's a vegan. So again, if you're going to claim that you claimed it was toxic, in order to make, in order to substantiate that claim, you are actually going to need to show me the concentration. No, I don't. So then either, yes, you do. So are, is it your position, wait, so is it your position that you don't need to show the concentration in order to make the case that something is toxic? I said I don't need to show any evidence. What I mean is I don't need to show any evidence. You made a claim. You claimed it was toxic. Now I'm asking you to show that it was it's toxic in those concentrations. So you need to actually show me the concentration in order to make the claim that it's toxic. If you don't if you can't do that, you need to back off your claim. And you can just say you can say you're agnostic about it. You could say I don't know. Well I pretty much did. But you can but no 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 you said you said it's no 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 you said it's toxic. You didn't say I don't know that it's toxic, you said it was toxic, you made a claim. So are you going to are you going are you going to back off of that claim? You're asking what how toxic is it and at what dose? No, I'm asking you, I'm asking, no, 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 no. I'm asking you what dose is present in coconut oil. I don't know. Okay, so then how do you know that it's toxic? Because it contains one. <laughs> that doesn't make it toxic. Pretty sure it does. No, if it just, if so, if there, okay, just to be clear, if there is one molecule of the salis, salis, salicylate in coke, in, and you consume one molecule of it, is that's going to be toxic for you. Is that your position? Not necessarily. Oh, well, well, then if... Wait, 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 hold on. If that's the case, if you say not necessarily, then it is the case that it's dose-dependent. What I meant... Then it, it, at, least, at least it could be the case that it's dose-dependent. Look, if it's, your, if it's your position that no dose matters, it's toxic regardless of dose, then if there's one molecule of it, you should say it's toxic. It's probably more appropriate to say it's a toxin regardless of the Okay, dose. we don't, then who cares? Then if you're going to define toxin like that, why should we care if it's a toxin? Why should we well, care if should, it's a toxin should, if that's yeah, how you define because, the toxin? Because you're saying... If it, has no, if it has no negative health outcome, why do we care if it's a toxin? Because you don't need to consume toxins. Why do I care about consuming it or not if there's no negative health outcome? Because it's it's still a toxin. Just because who cares if you're defining toxin that way? If you're look, if you're going to define toxin in a way that it, it makes absolutely no difference to your health and consumed in a given amount, then why should I care if I'm consuming that toxin in that given amount? Well, as I said, you don't know what you don't know. I could come out with a research drug. Let's just say I'm a chemist and I design a research chemical, and there's been no studies about any of the negative health effects, potential health effects of this drug, you know, would it be safe for me to consume? Can you provide, can you actually, I'm just curious, can you actually show me evidence that there are salis, salicylates in coconut oil? Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, I haven't read any of these, but you'll probably find something. Wait, you haven't read them? Nah, it's it's like common knowledge. Okay, let me see what you're posting. Yeah, I saw this thing. Salicylate sensitivity. Okay. And where does it say that um, this is in coconut oil? Probably somewhere. Where? I know you'd have to search for it. I'm, I'm searching for it. 
Let's see. I don't know, man. You can, it you says can low. It says here. It says low salicylate. It says low salicylate coconut. All right. So already. It's and let me see where the reference is. Five. Okay. Triangle association. Let's check this PDF out. So it's already saying it's in a low concentration. So. And as long as the look, the therapeutic range of salicylates are about fifteen to thirty milligrams per deciliter. So let's see how much is in here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to track the reference, and I'm not actually getting anywhere. But the point being is, oh, here, hold on. It seems to be loading now. Oh, it links to it links to something that's dead. It links to uh, if you can find the reference that this thing is citing, then I would appreciate it. But it's um, it's getting me to a dead link. I'm trying to get no. the reference that your your thing is citing because I'm I, you're not posting an actual study. You're posting like an article that tries to cite something that's also not a study. So I'm just trying to follow the links and hope to get to a study. But in any case, it doesn't seem like we should worry about this. I mean, it's it's admit your own source is admitting that these are in low concentrations. Well, I'm just saying, if you know, there's a toxin in food, there's no reason to consume it. Well, so, no, 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 no. Because here's the, here's why. Again, we're gonna we're gonna go over this this again. So, if something is a toxin, and any toxin can have no effect on you, or even a beneficial effect on you, if it is present in low concentrations, do you understand that point? Things that are yeah. labeled as toxins can have not only a neutral effect on you, but they can also have in some cases, a beneficial effect on you, even if they are toxins at low enough concentrations. Sure. Okay, then how do you know there's no point of consuming it? I'm just saying you don't have to consume toxins. Okay, okay but okay, no, 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 no. But yeah, not, no one's claiming whether you have to consume something. That wasn't what we were talking about. You made the claim that something is toxic. That implies that there are negative health outcomes associated with it or caused by it. And I'm explaining to you why that doesn't follow. No, you kind of did a vegan brain fog there. I said that, uh, you know, if something has a toxin, not necessarily toxic because that would require a diet. So I don't know. I can't tell you so it's toxic. Who, who cares? And who cares? It is. Then, think, think then who? Yeah, that. because you could could be again. It could, for all you know, it could be beneficial. For all I know, but I know it's a toxin it causes inflammation. For all you know, it could be beneficial. Then how? Then why would you ever make a case that this would be? Are you trying to say this is problematic, or are you just saying, okay, well, there's this presence of this thing in it? I'm saying it could I'm, be problematic. You don't know what you don't know. It could be, and, and it could be, and it could be beneficial. Well, you don't need to consume it. It could be, so it could be problematic or it could be beneficial, right? Sure. Okay, so then why would that influence my decision of consuming it either way? It would just be a non-factor. But you just don't need it, that's what I'm saying. Well, how do you know that? You How do you know that? You Well, no, no, no. We're not talking about if we don't need something or not. That's not what the conversation was. Not changing the conversation. It would be beneficial or not. In this specific context, if you're saying this is something that may be beneficial and we can't get it, I'm saying we can get it. And you're saying, well, no, there's a problem because there are there's this compound in your source of heme iron. So I'm just saying, well, how do you know that's not a that's a problem that's not actually beneficial? Why would it, if it's if we don't know if it's beneficial or harmful, why would it make why would it influence our decision making either way? Well, it goes back to my argument. Would you would you take a research chemical with no data on it? You would. That's not that's not comparable. You don't know. Again, you don't this know. is this is something again. That's 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 just not comparable. We've studied this is not this is something that's been studied. It's been something that's been studied. It's been, it's probably been out for decades and been studied for decades. This isn't some new thing that came out in the lab. Okay. Here, look. Here is. I'm, here's a paper I'm linking. I'm linking it in general. Okay. 
The presence of naturally occurring salicylates in fruits, vegetables, spices, uh, beverages, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, have been confirmed by several research groups. Although concentrations determined do not always agree, Swain et al. suggests that a normal mixed diet contains total salicylates in the range of 100 to 200 milligrams per day. Although other groups have suggested that this may likely be an overestimate owing to a lack of analytical specificity. Jackson et al. suggested that the intake of dietary salicylates in subjects taking a mixed diet was only on the order of 2 to 4 milligrams per day, an amount probably too low to affect disease risk. However, the work reported here and previously, this dietary silicate may be significant in vegetarians and can produce concentrations of silicate that, o- that overlap with those seen in subjects taking 75 milligrams of aspirin per day. Because the anti-inflammatory action of aspirin is probably the result of salicylic acid, the concentration of salicylic acid seen in vegetarians is it is plausible that dietary salicylates may contribute to the beneficial effects of a vegetarian diet, although it seems unlikely that people consuming mixed diet will receive sufficient intake of salicylates after they start to that. So, it's actually, by the way, it's actually thought that the COX-2 inhibition by this level of salicylic acid is beneficial, based, based on the publication I'm just reading to you. So, there seems to be reason to believe that not only are the levels of salicylates that vegetarians are consuming are not only not harmful, it seems to be that there may be reason to believe that they actually are beneficial. So your own point not only doesn't support your position, it actually supports my position. Not really because it's... And not there's... really because what? There's people with salicylate in- intolerance and that aren't able to consume salicylates. This, pa- so... this paper was what? Wait, what? There's, there are people that are not able to consume salicylates that have salicylate intolerance. My point being is that... Intolerance? In, wait, intolerance? Wait, wait, in, I can't hear what you're saying. Intolerance? No, nah, just I'm saying people intolerance. Intolerance. Oh, people with salis, salis, salicylate intolerance. Okay, wh- and what dosage of... of uh, sal- Look, if people have a salicylate intolerance, all I would just say is... Um, I would revert to elemental things like elemental iron or things like iron gluconate, which has higher absorption than things like uh, uh, than uh, more uh, oxide forms of. Um, so iron, iron gluconate. Um, what's the problem with that? Like, what's the evidence that someone wouldn't be able to? So let's say someone has a salicylate. Like, I'll grant you this. Like, we can posit all of these rare things. So what's the problem with just supplementing with iron gluconate? With iron. With glucanate. Um, I uh, speculate that it's not very bioavailable. Iron gluconate is pretty bioavailable. And another problem with it is, again, you have to supplement. You can't get it from the actual vegan diet. Uh, why? Who? 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 who well, no, 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 no. One, Which is, one, is number one. On. Wait, wait. <laughs> number one. No, no, no. No, no, no. We don't. One, number one. Who cares? Number one. Who cares? Number two, how do you know we can't get it from a vegan diet? Well, I just linked a study that showed that. That um, doesn't. No, no, no. no you're no, no. That doesn't. That that doesn't mean they can't get it from a vegan diet. That means that the vegan diet that they were employing, they weren't consuming enough iron. The conclusion yeah. isn't fo- isn't fo- well. No, the conclusion's not following from your study. Now, you're you're it's taking a study. You're, no, no. No, no, it's it's evidence in your fa- it's evidence that there are vegans who have been deficient in iron. It's not evidence that one cannot get iron on a vegan diet. And even if it was, who cares if we have to supplement with iron? You can get some, but probably not enough. You can get what? You can get some, but probably not enough. How do you know that? Because I see them. Every day, they're pale. No, but that's that's not evidence in terms of what one can get on the vegan diet. So you have yes, actual yes. evidence. Do you, no, it isn't. If Just healthy, again, what it? Well, again, you don't know. That's again, that's not evidence. So do you know? Do you understand why that's not evidence for what you're saying? You it all that is evidence, evidence for. No, all all it's is, nope. All that is all evidence. all you are saying. All you are saying. All you are saying there is that there are a group this particular set of vegans have had iron issues to conclude that and i'll grant that there are that is the case but it doesn't follow from that that 
this particular set of vegans, if they operated a, their vegan diet in a different way, could not resolve their iron problems. That doesn't. There's no entailment from the study. There's no support of the, from of that conclusion from the study. It's still evidence in my favor. That no, it's no, no, no. Uh, no, 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 no! Now you're changing. Now you're changing. Ooh, that was really no, is, slimy. Is, what you did there. Ooh, that was slimy. Oh, wait a minute. You just—that's not what you said before. You did anyone catch that? I'll I'll repeat what you just said, just so everyone can see the slip. You said it is still evident in my favor that the vegan diet is possibly deficient. <laughs> that's not what you came out swinging and claiming. Now you're in the truth Listen, the truth listen. The truth no, 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 listen, listen. Listen, I just, I just, I just, listen. Luke, 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 I just want to let you know, please do not get slimy like this with me. Uh, let me just tell you right now, it is far too, it is far too early in the night to be putting on this much lube, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm telling the truth, man, like, you may get a little no. You changed percentages you, of you, these. You made a slip there. You changed your position completely in order to avoid. In no, order to avoid, you saw exactly where it was going, and then you couldn't. You could not defend your position, and then you completely no, changed. The it. vegan diet is a, de is a, is a deficient mm -hmm. diet. Okay, oh, okay, that's not what you. No. Oh, now now you're going back to the strong claim. Okay. So you're going back to the the strong claim, not the weak claim. You said it's possibly deficient. The overall that's what you issue, said. Yes. Yes. Well, now is it is your claim that it's possibly deficient or that it's a hundred percent deficient? Well, so you may be able to get little percentages of different nutrients, but not. Is enough. your claim overall, that it's yes, pot? It's is your claim? Okay, okay. Overall, the vegan diet is deficient. Not pot. Is it possibly deficient or is it just deficient? Because any diet is possibly deficient in things. No, it is deficient. Yeah. Okay. Well, what is it deficient in? Well, for example, B12. I think okay, B12. Yep, I, I, yep, I agree. And then, what's the problem with us supplementing? Well, it's not. Bad. Great. So why? So why should we not just be vegan and supplement with B12? Because. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, you're supporting the vegan diet. Uh, what's the problem with that? I'm supporting a diet and that what the with supplements. You're admitting that you can't get everything you need from a vegan diet. No, I'm not. I'm not claiming that we get everything, every nutrient we need from a natural vegan diet. I'm what I'm saying is that from a non-natural vegan diet, we do, which includes supplementation. Okay, so would you also supplement fatty acids? Omega six. What do you get? Omega six. Would I also so what? Would no, I think also... omega. I, I think omega. I think the data on omega uh, on omega threes and omega six are very um, are very sketchy. And I actually don't think that there's actually good data that vegans actually don't have that far of a difference between omega the omega three omega sixes than uh, omnivores than many omnivores do. And furthermore, no one actually knows the optimal ratios of omega threes and omega sixes. And if you can show us evidence of what those optimal levels are, I'd be happy to see it. I don't have evidence of what the optimal levels are, but I have like four studies showing that they're deficient. Well, how do you wait? Wait, how do you know if they're deficient if you don't know what levels one should, one should have? I, I think there's a level that people are supposed to actually. How how do you know that? Well, I don't know what the RDA is. Wait, wait. How do you how do you wait? How do you know that a, someone is deficient in something if you don't know what level they're supposed to have? Well, I don't know what level they're supposed to have. But then how do you know, then how can you claim someone's deficient? Well, by measuring... Well, you're just going to measure a level, but how do you know that level is too high or too low? Well, I don't. Okay, then how can you claim they're deficient? <laughs> well, then how do you wait? Then how do you claim they're deficient? I'm not, I'm you just said <laughs> that there is a study, multiple studies showing that. Uh huh. Well, how do you? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. 
which was and how, my conclusion. How do you know? Vegan diet but, is wait, vegan. wait. Wait, are you saying you have are you saying you had to you have a study showing A what the required levels are to not be deficient no. and B that vegans are deficient? Oh, then how do you know they're deficient with that study? Cuz I've seen a study. That, okay. I'll just think it. And did that sh- and did that uh, Did you read this? I'm just going to ask, did you read this study or are we going to both read this yes, together read for the this first one. time? Okay, and where does it say what the level is required for a given omega-3 or omega-6 uh, in order to not be deficient in it? Uh, I don't think it does. I just measured it. In yeah, the- so all it says, the re- proportional EPA, DHA were lower in vegetarians and in vegans. And the media is where it was only small differences seen in DPA, plasma EPA, DPA. Uh, EPA in proportions were not significantly associated with the duration of time that subjects were vegetarian and vegan. Uh, and vegetarians, vegans, plasma DHA was inversely correlated with plasma LA. So what? How does that get you to the conclusion that they're deficient? How does that get you to the conclusion that they're deficient? Well, that just supports my um, my assertion. How? No, it could be. It could go against your assertion. It could very well be that um, that omnivores that or non-vegans have levels that are just too high. Are you saying that omega three is I'm just saying, based on what has been presented here, for all you know, the le- those levels, all the all this study shows is that with respect to a given fatty acid, vegans had a lower level than uh, non-vegans. Now I'm asking you, what is that? Could, for all you know, that could be a good thing or a bad. Thing. So unless you can show, can't overdose on that. Unless, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, oh, ha- wait a minute! You can't overdose on that, really. Not that I'm aware of. You can overdose. You can overdose on anything, technically. You can if you just keep. Can, can you imagine well, if you I just mean, made that 100 percent of your diet? Is what I'm saying. Again, but that, but it, but again, even if you, again, you, r- regardless of the question of overdosing, how do you know that this, that having a higher level of it won't lead to a harmful effect as opposed to a, a beneficial effect? Well, I don't know. What did I? Okay, then how are you, then why would you, then why would you use this study to claim deficiency? You're using this study to claim deficiency. All it's showing is that there are different levels. How do you know what the required level is? Does it matter? There's what? Yes, it matters. Because if, look, the reason it matters is because if the required level is really low, then it would, and even at different levels, it could be meaningless and it wouldn't show deficiency. And if there was a problem with having too high levels, it can actually show the opposite of effect that non vegans are actually harming themselves by having too high levels. So, in order to make your case, you actually need you actually need to make the case that here is what the required levels actually are. So, do you agree that mm-hmm. vegans have low? I'm sorry, you cut out. So do you agree that vegans have low levels? I agree that in this specific study, vegans had uh, lower of uh, proportions of plasma EPA and DHA. There's other agree. studies, by the way. There are, other, there are other studies, by the way, that show that they weren't that different. So it's important not to cherry pick evidence. So we're going to go to... Well, I have multiple studies, and I also have studies that the plant forms of omega-3, alpha-linoleic acid, is not that um, bioavailable and convertible. It doesn't... I don't see why... No, it, that's... I'll grant you that, but I don't see why that matters if you can't show what level is required to not be deficient. Well, where do you... Well, it matters because that is where the vegans think they get the... Omega-3. Again, again, oh, again, yeah, you're, not not you're, not, you're not tracking. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not tracking now. You're not tracking. It could very well be that the, even if we grant that, your conclusion still doesn't follow. Do you understand why? Because even if we are only converting a small amount of it, even if that was the case, it could very well be that the optimal amount is that small amount, unless you have evidence showing otherwise. So what you need to do is present evidence showing what the optimal level is or showing what a, a healthy versus unhealthy level is and then you know what the vegan levels are, and then you would have a case. 
Right now, all you're showing is that there are differences in levels. Oh, I'm already showing that it's the dying. You, 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 you haven't. Okay, no, no, no. Now you're going That's back to B12. So Ooh, we're getting slimy again. Oh man, we're putting on more lube. We're not. Listen, don't go. Don't try going back to B12. We already talked about that. I'm gonna push you on this because I've got you here. You're making a claim about omega threes and omega sixes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the. In order to claim that we have too low levels, you can't just show that we have lower levels with respect to another group. Ooh, you actually you need to show no. You can, that that in and of itself doesn't get you where you need. What you actually have to do is show that you actually have to do. What you actually have to do is show that those low levels are actually terminate in an outcome. They terminate in negative health outcomes with respect to higher levels. That would get you your case. You need two you things in order to make your case. You measure the amount of omega three and made it. In and the amount of omega three mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. therefore doesn't therefore what levels of therefore omega yep therefore that vegans have lower levels of omega three but that could be but that could be a good thing that doesn't need necessarily mean it's a bad thing, a thing. <laughs> because sometimes nutrient having too much nutrients is a bad thing. Show me a study. That are you familiar? Are you familiar with nutrient toxic? What? I don't, I don't, no, 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 don't. Ooh, that's slime ball number three move. I never claimed one way or the other. All I'm saying is we don't know. Sometimes, in some cases, having too much nutrients leads to nutrient toxicity. In some cases, it doesn't. All I'm saying is I don't know the optimal levels, and neither do you. And in order to show that we're suboptimal, you actually need to establish some frame of, op of what optimal is. And then you need to show what the levels are in different groups. So don't try to well, shift it back, the burden of proof, back to me. I'm not making the claim. Where, where do you get omega-3? These have some, vegans have some amount of omega-3, even if the, conver the conversion is not zero, by the way. So vegans have some amount of omega-3. The conversion is lower, but it's not zero. So the question is, the question is, if you want to say, is that deficient, or is that, for all you know, that smaller amount could be optimal, unless you can show what it is. And that's not even mentioning other sources of omega threes. We're not we that don't rely I don't, on the. I, don't really see, I know there's plenty of omega three fish, for example. I can't say this. It, al, in algae, there's omega threes, but like, it, but that's not even the point. The point is, you aren't actually showing vegans are deficient. In order to do that, you need to establish what deficient is. Were you saying how much? You're saying. Uh, Algae has omega three. No, it doesn't. It has alpha linoleic acid, which is not omega three. It gets converted to omega three. It doesn't. I'm have pretty sure. Look, I'm pretty sure. No, al I'm pretty sure algae or algae oil has has EPA and DHA. That's that's no. just that's just a false claim. I don't know. I don't think you're gonna go swimming. You never go diving in the sea for sea. Listen, algae, yeah, algae oil does contain EPA and DHA. So I don't, it's, yeah, I'm, uh, you're just, it's just a false claim. Hmm. What about cholesterol? Yeah, I think um, dietary cholesterol increases um, based on the latest meta regression analysis. It increases serum cholesterol, serum LDL, and based on the Mendelian randomization studies, uh, it seems to be all things considering your risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, how? Uh, I don't think we don't need to know how actually. Um, we just know the outcome because we, and we know it's causative because of the Mendelian, it was a Mendelian randomization study. I don't think there's ever been a study showing that, uh, fat and cholesterol causes heart disease. Oh, sure. Okay. So here we, we can go through this right now. Um, so here's the latest, uh, Mendelian random. Here's the, first of all, here's the latest, it's a two-step process. So. We're going to present you evidence from randomized controlled trials showing the relationship between dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol and saturated fat um, and serum cholesterol. And we're going to show you that in increases in serum LDL cholesterol uh, increase risk of heart disease. So that's the causal pathway. So here we go. 
This is a, an analysis of this is an analysis of metabolic word studies with saturated fat that I'm posting in general. And this is the latest meta regression analysis on dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol. And this is a review, and it has the metabolic ward study, I mean, sorry, it has the Mendelian randomization studies showing that serum, cholesterol, serum LDL cholesterol is causative, not just associated, but causative to cardiovascular disease. Oh, that study was funded by pharmaceutical industries. Which study? Uh, the one on LDL. Which one? The, the one LDL causes atherosclerotic disease. Yeah, the LDL. Wait, one. wait, wait. This is a this is an anal this is an analysis of Mendelian randomization studies. The randomization studies. Wait, first of all, let's look at the. Let me see where where in the pharmaceutical. Where's the disclosure? You have to look at the um. Funding. Okay, let me see. Um, okay, so Carbacid Agents are meeting logistics, understood grants from, okay, Amgen to the European Atherosclerosis Society. Okay, so number one, a couple things, so that's fine, thank you for pointing that out. Number one, just pointing out a funding source doesn't actually discount a study. You actually, just like I wouldn't discount the study just because it's supported by the egg or dairy or meat industry. So that's one, but the two is, this is actually a review, it's not an individual study. We can go to the individual Mendelian randomization. The only reason I post this is because it has the individual Mendelian randomization studies, and it's not necessarily the case that those studies are funded by the pharmaceutical industry. So we can Why go do you to think I would fund this, this is a review. <laughs> this is a review. review. Whatever. Okay, then I can just post you the individual studies that weren't funded by it. Yeah, but why do you... I can just give you... I, why is it relevant? I can just give you the... Look, if you want to dismiss it on that grounds, I can just give you the it's, individual it's studies that weren't funded by Because they're the one trying to... Cholesterol. Wait, wait, wait. Look, you... Again, again, I acknowledge that there, that there are incentives and motives for it's many different... It's a conflict different... of interest. Sure. Okay, sure. So let me get... Would you accept the individual studies if they don't have a conflict of interest? Um, no, I wouldn't anyway because why? 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 It, it just it just means nothing. It just means what? It means nothing. Everybody. Why does I it? Know, wait. Why does it mean? Why does it mean? Wait, 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 wait. If the randomization study shows that LDLC is causative to cardiovascular disease, why does that mean nothing? Because it's all based on associative studies. No, no, it's not. That's it's a Mendelian randomization study. It's not an association study. It's impossible to try to quantify that from what people eat anyway. Yes, no, 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 no. It absolutely no, no, no. You're you're not following. It absolutely is possible to quantify changes in serum cholesterol from what people are eating, and it absolutely is possible to show causation of LDLC. So here's another study that I'm going to post. It's just epidemiology. This is sequence variation, and no, it's not. This is a this is not epidemiology. It's not epidemiology. It's it is a Mendelian randomization study. You're confusing the two. It's not an epidemi. It's a Mendelian randomization study, and that has a randomization component, which which makes it second tier to which makes it sec second tier which makes it second tier to a randomized controlled trial. It is, it is not a epidemiology study. It is, it is not on the level of an epidemiology study with respect to inferring causation. Yeah, but you have no mechanism by which no, no, no. It's that's irrelevant. We don't need to know the mechanism. That is very relevant because you can't no, nope, nope, actually nope. Occur. You actually nope. You don't need to know the nope. You can te you can infer causation without knowing the mechanism. You do not need to know the mechanism to infer causation. It's just tangential. Well, as, as far as I'm concerned, the whole thing is funded by pharmacy. You can test, you I can, no, 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 it wasn't. No, Why it wasn't. It no, it wasn't. I just, I just, I just posted a Mendelian randomization study and there's no, and I'm not seeing any funding from pharmaceutical companies. 
whatever the review is. Who is? Yes. Yeah, so the, what? Uh, so what? It's a review. Yes, the, the review is based. On, yeah, but the review is based off the individual studies that were not funded on it. So here, look. Here's an individual study. Here's it published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This is sequence variations in PCSK9. Now, this was not funded by the pharmaceutical industry. What's your response to this Mendelian randomization study? Let's have a look. As I said, this is associative. I like plasma. Nope, nope, nope. I test Mendelian. Mendelian. Nope. Reduce nope. risk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you're not. What you're not understanding is that. Study. Nope, you're 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 not. You're not getting it. You're not tracking. You're not. You're not. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not. You're really. You're really not getting it. Okay, so real quick, I I can explain to you how. So Mendelian randomization associations in Mendelian randomizations test for causality. It's different from just an epidemiologic association, associative study. And the reason for that is because they look at single nucleotide polymorphisms and they look at what percentage of the variance changes based on, based, they're called instruments, and then they examine what the instruments can explain a given variance. They can, ex a, a given variance of what they're, of, uh, it could be LDLC, it could be HDL, it could be any, any marker. And then by accounting for that, they can look to see if people with these with these proportions of these uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms have different outcomes. Now, the reason why this is not just association is because Mendelian randomization is ha occurs when the alleles segregate during meiosis, mitosis, and they segregate at random. So there's a built-in randomization that happens. So you're not just looking at pure association. You do have a component of a randomization which allows you to make causal inferences based on that association. It's not just an association study, if it's a Mendelian randomization study. Still, it's all very wish-washy. You don't the mechanism explain it. No, it's that, so again, again, so there's a built-in randomization. you random certainly event. can't um, attribute it to diet. <laughs> yep, you can. Yes, no, you can, you and here's, well, you here's why. You can't isolate way everybody. Yep. Well, you know, we we've nice. already we've already we've already presented to you the we've already presented to you. I presented a meta regression analysis showing a relationship between dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol, and I presented a meta meta analysis of metabolic ward studies showing the relationship between saturated fat and serum cholesterol. And how do you know what now, these people are eating? Because they they controlled what they were eating. It was a controlled trial. They were metabolic ward experiments. What? They didn't control the diet. Completely. Yes, they did. Oh, yes, they did. Uh, wait, wait, yeah, they that? did. What do you think a metabolic ward experiment is? Where did they control for diet? They controlled for diet as part of the trial. They they controlled what they ate and what they didn't eat. That's what. What do you? Th what do you think a, a metabolic ward experiment is? I don't believe you. Where does it say this? <sighs> okay, we can go that's through. Not, that's we not can... ethical. That's not what? It's not ethical. What do you mean it's not ethical? <laughs> it's completely ethical. They volunteered to. The... Thousands of people's lives. No, it's completely ethical. They, um, they, are, they, it's called informed consent. They sign informed consent. They are, they explain what the study is. They explain that you, you will be given a certain meals. We will control what you eat by because we will be feeding you. They determine what they eat. I mean, what? Why is this so hard to understand? Where does it say this then? Okay, sure. So, the, so let's go through. If you want, we can go through the, the study because I've actually gone through this. Here we go. All right. Okay. Okay. Published reports of dietary interventional studies conducted under controlled conditions that ensured compliance. Parentheses. Metabolic ward studies and parentheses.
That's what a metabolic ward study is, where the dietary compliance is controlled for. It's ensured that there was compliance. Yeah. How do they do that? By feed, by being the ones who feed them. So, for example, one example would be if a patient is in the hospital and you are controlling what they eat because you're the only one feeding them. So very easily you can modify what their diet is because they're in your building. There you can you essentially the only access to food they have is you. So you can purely be the one to determine what they're eating. That's very easy to do. Yeah. You can, or you can have them or you can have a healthy patient be placed into a room. Uh, you could in a hotel or whatever, and you can be the one to ensure that you're Again, the only one who's able to feed them. Can't make the association with diet because you're way, 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 way. Yes, way. Yes. Well, no, it's not association because it it's randomized. So you can, do you understand? Sugar, listen, with, listen. It's not. It's no, not an these. I have not presented a single epidemiologic. Nope. Nope. Again, it's associative, but it's on. It's the type of study <laughs> that you can infer causation from. Again, what do you what what do you look? What do you think a randomized control trial is? The point the point of randomization is that there's going to be an association in the randomized control trial, but that's not the point. The point is that that infers causation. When you're faced with un, being unsure of a causal pathway or a confounder in an association, what you do is you randomize. That is the easiest way to get to to get to the answer. That is the e yes, I can. It was controlled for. The point, and it was randomized. So, again, the point is, the point is it was, the point is that when you are faced, when you are faced with a question of whether there's an association or a causation, you can randomize, and you can tell if the association is causative. You can infer causation. So, what is your response? To that, With that being said, what is your response to the metabolic word studies? Um, it can't explain how cholesterol causes heart disease, and it doesn't explain how it relates. What to is your response? It doesn't. Disease. That's not what it seeks to do. It's not what it seeks to do. Again, it attempts to infer causality. Now, what's your response? We are to supporting that? the vegan diet. We're talking about food. There's a discussion on. I'm supporting again. That's not an answer to the question. What is your response to the Mendelian randomization studies inferring causation between LDLC and atherosclerosis? Don't trust it. It's funded by why don't why, why don't why don't why don't you? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. The study I posted to you was not funded by pharmaceutical companies. What? Again, that doesn't. It, that one, that particular one that you linked. Um, mm -hmm. What's your explain, response to it? You can't explain. It's not what it seeks to do. It's not what it. It's not what it. It doesn't seek to explain the mechanism. All it is there to do is is distinguish between association and causation, and it concludes causation. So, what is your response to that? No response, really, other than other than what I just said. Which is what? Which is uh, it, it doesn't mean anything. You can't nail down what those people were actually it eating. Again. Again, no. Now you're now you're going back to the other study that was linked to you. So now you're now you're being slimy again. So look, I don't think you're intentionally being slimy. Actually, I'll take that back. I think you might not ju just be not tracking now. So, I'll we're not talking about what they were eating because we're talking about whether LDLC, which is a zero marker, is cause is a causative agent to atherosclerosis. Now the Mendelian randomization study has inferred causation as opposed to association. What is your response to the Mendelian randomization study that I've linked to you? It's crap. It's why is it crap? Because you can't explain how it causes heart disease. It's, why do we need to explain that? Because it may not be the thing that actually but then why would the men, then why in is it the case of diet. then why then why is it the case that after randomization it's associated with it even after randomization? Don't know. Okay, but you understand that you understand that that's a criteria that ev almost everyone accepts as a causal inference. Does that mean not that's why randomized control trials exist? Does that 
does that mean none of us should eat cholesterol? Not necessarily, because again, we don't know the foods that are associated with. Heart it disease. means what it what it means is that all things considered equal, it seems to be the case that eating cholesterol will have a negative effect, some some amount of a negative effect. Yes. In what circumstance? On what in, diet? Our, in, in, it, it, it seems to be the case on any diet because this Mendelian randomization presumably would have people from all sorts of diets. So then you're right. As did the meadow. Uh, yeah. As, as is, well, if you, by definition, I mean, I guess you can have synthetic cholesterol on a vegan diet and still be vegan, but I wouldn't advocate for that either. Do you agree there are benefits to eating cholesterol? Having no, I know I don't. I don't. I don't see. Well, having cholesterol, yes. To eating cholesterol, I don't see any benefit. How about increased testosterone? I'm not aware of any evidence that consuming cholesterol increases testosterone to statistically significant or clinically significant. I'm pretty sure we could find something. Are you just looking up this on the spot, or do you actually know? Are you just like looking for what you're looking for when you're searching for this, or do you, do you actually have studies in mind that you? That no, you're... I know from personal experience that it increases my. Testosterone. You know from person. Oh no! Please, let's not go this route. Come and, on. And actually, it is a precursor. <laughs> Come on, right. dude. Okay, well, well, wait, yeah, wait. Again, again, <laughs> just because just because cholesterol is a precursor doesn't mean consumption of cholesterol increases testosterone it doesn't follow all right uh, actually, do you have can. data yes or no listen do you have what what's your data reading it you're reading it i mean i'm just gonna make an observation here. like like <laughs> you can't I mean, get cholesterol on a vegan thing i'm just like don't you don't you see how it looks when you are having a debate and you're trying to have an honest debate and then you're just looking up studies that support your position without actually having those studies and you're just saying well i'm sure i could find something that supports my position and then you're typing up you're clearly just typing up something to yeah. support your yeah i mean i mean this this doesn't seem like you're operating in good faith here like imagine if I did that. Imagine if I did that with you. Imagine like, well, I'm sure if I just looked up something for the vegan diet, I would be able to type something into my computer and find something that supports the vegan diet. Here you go. Like, would you accept that? Are you that? trying to say that I'm biased? I'm trying to say that you're engaging in motivated reasoning. It's not just that you're biased. It's that you're not arguing in good faith. Well, I don't believe that uh, the vegan diet is health. So, no, I don't, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about what your beliefs are. I'm talking about the, the way you're operating in this. Thing. my health. So, of course. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you're operating good faith, you shouldn't be on the spot looking up things that are. What is good faith? What is that? Okay, look. There's no such thing. Look, do you have the data or not? Look, do you have, do you have the data or not? Do you have data or not? You know what? I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the meta anymore. Do you have data or not? On cholesterol and testosterone? What? Yes. That's what uh, you were asked for. No. Okay. So you do not have data that cholesterol statistically or clinically affects testosterone? Um, no. Okay, great. So what's your response to Mendelian randomization studies and the metabolic ward studies? The ones you listed before. Yeah. What's your response? They're associative. They don't explain. No, there, how there's yeah. No, 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 no. no. There's a random. There, no, no. There's a random. Nope. There's a random. Nope. 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 They're not. Nope. 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 The the Mendelian randomization I posted was not funded by any pharmaceutical company, and it, there was a associative. component of randomization in there. Nope. There was a, it was randomized. That's what ran, that's what randomization means because those alleles segregate randomly. So it's not, you're allowed to do that, uh, that study, and you're allowed to infer those associations as causative. That's the whole point of a Mendelian randomization study. Any of those people eating. It doesn't matter. Well, it's, <laughs> it's No, no, it doesn't matter. It's because the conclusion, the conclusion, importance. the conclusion is just that whether the conclusion of the Mendelian randomization study is just that LDLC is causative to atherosclerosis. 
Serum LDLC is causative to atherosclerosis. Now, what's your response to that? We're not talking about diet right now. We're just talking about whether serum LDLC is causative to atherosclerosis. That's uh, bullshit. I don't believe it. Why don't you believe it? Don't, what's wrong really with the study? It. Why don't you? What, what's wrong with the study then? Don't believe it. Can't why don't you believe? Why don't what? What's? Why don't you? Why? Why don't you believe the study? What's wrong with it? Associative. No, again, we went through this already. So just because, again, there is a randomization built into a Mendelian randomization study. So it's not just it's an association to do with not, diet. It's not. It's not just. Okay, we're not talking about diet right now. Now you're trying to evade again. So we're just talking about whether serum LDLC is causative to atherosclerosis. I presented to you a Mendelian randomization study. Now, what's your response to that? My response is: How does that relate to diet? We're, I will. Re- okay, we can, we'll get there. I'll, I'll explain. I'll, I'll explain how it relates. But before we get there, I want you to have a response. Do you think that LDLC is causative to atherosclerosis? Oh yes, totally. A cause. Okay, great. Disease. Okay, great, great. Now, do you accept that consumption? Then wait, wait, wait. I know that what I said is: Do you accept that serum LDLC is causative to atherosclerosis? No. Okay, so here's the so I linked you a Mendelian randomization study inferring causality as opposed to just association. What is your response? I don't believe it. Why don't you believe it? No evidence. There was I just linked you the evidence. No mechanistic data. No explanation. Oh, but 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 mechani- But wait, wait. Why do we need mechanistic data? Yeah, because you need to be able to explain how that happens. No, you don't. No, you don't. In order for me to believe. Why, why, why? Listen, let me ask you this. Before we knew about the mechanism for smoking causing cancer, we had associative studies. Do you take the view that all of that is wrong in smoking? We can't actually, we couldn't actually infer at that time that smoking causes cancer because we didn't know the mechanism by which smoking causes cancer? Quite possibly. Oh, okay. So if you, so just to be clear, just to be clear, you take the view that at the time in which we were inferring smoking causes cancer based on the associative study, it, that was actually invalid for us to do. That we actually yeah, had to wait until because you could be wait until okay. Okay. Just cancer. to be so. Just to be clear. Just to be clear. Just to be clear. Um, do you believe that smoking causes cancer? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. So do you? Okay. All right. <laughs> like, do you, like, do you believe that? Let me ask you this: Do you believe that high doses of cyanide kill someone, or Probably. do do kill someone? Okay. Do you know the mechanism by which that happens? Uh, basically, it's just pure poison. You probably stop breathing. Wait, wait. But what? Yeah, but no, 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 no. But what's the mechanism by which cyanide kills people? I don't know. Okay. So you don't know. So can you infer that cyanide? kills people uh probably yeah wait wait wait. how do you no no no. you don't have you don't have an explanation because it's a toxin wait wait no but that's not explaining how the toxin works no 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 i can no i can do this too i can just i can just label cholesterol as as a toxin but like you don't you that doesn't explain anything do you have an explanation for how high levels of cyanide kill people um no i don't know Okay, so can you infer that high levels of cyanide kill people? Uh, probably. Oh, like, so you yeah. can infer. How, wait, but how, but how can you do that if you don't have the explanation? I'm just making an assumption. You're making an assumption? So but why would you make that assumption? Are you, are you just saying it's an assumption, or can you reasonably infer that high levels of cyanide actually kill people? Well, Is that I a reasonable inference? Myself, so. I know, kind of is it a reason? No, hold on. Answer the answer the question. Look, you said that we can't infer causation without a mechanism. So I'm just asking you. No, I didn't say that. Ca- then why would you? Then why would you care if I did, if the Mendelian randomization study didn't have a an ex, a mechanistic explanation? Because for me, in order to be able to believe it, I need to be able to explain the phenomena. 
Can you explain the phenomena of large? The great, great. So, can you explain the phenomena of large doses of cyanide killing someone? No, I can't. Okay, so do you believe that large doses of cyanide kill people? Probably. But in order to believe that something will do this, then you need to have the explanation. But you don't. You just said that you don't have the explanation for this, but you do believe it. Yep. Okay, it's but you a, see the not problem not now, not don't you? <laughs> It's not a contradiction. Yes, it is. Yeah, I can. Would you like me to derive it for you? It's not a contradiction. Would you like? Answer. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look, look. You said, you said, in order to believe, for me to believe X, I need Y. And then you say, for for every so for for the cases in which I believe X, I need Y. Here is a case in which I do not have Y, and I believe X. So I believe I I do and do not need. Y in order to believe X. It is the case and it is not the case that you need Y in order to believe X. Nah, that's that's faulty, the contradiction. You're saying you're saying is I'm not. Mm -hmm. I said probably. That doesn't mean that I'm certain. That wait, so wait, no, 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 no. So you said you said death. you said. Hold on. You said in order for you to believe it, you need to have the explanation. Now I asked you, do you have the explanation that cyanide? Kill, high levels of cyanide kill people. You said no, and then I said, "Well, do you believe that high levels of cyanide kill you?" And then you said yes. Yeah, but that but you also said in order. You I also die. said in order. You also said in order for you to believe, it, to believe that these things do these things, that, that you would need the explanation. This explanation is required in order for you to believe it. That entails a contradiction. No, because it doesn't mean that I necessarily need an explanation in order for me you, to conclusively say this thing that's no now you're now you're changing now you're changing what you said okay you can modify what you said I but said, i just like to point out you're probably changing. it's not black and probably white. okay so then we can then we can probably then then why can't you probably infer it? so now why can't you probably infer this in the case of the mendelian randomization study for ldlc because I don't have an explanation at all. No, you just said you didn't need an explanation for probable inference. I said not necessarily. You said yes. So you said you don't necessarily need an explanation for probable inference. So and I'm asking you, so I'm just going to ask you again, why is it the case that you need an explanation in the case of the Mendelian randomization study for LDLC? Because I don't believe it. <laughs> Why don't you believe it? Because I don't have an explanation. <laughs> well, you just said you don't necessarily need an explanation. That's right. So why don't you believe it? Because I don't believe it. Because what? Because I don't have any explanation. If I have an explanation, but you just said you don't. But you just said you don't necessarily need. It, but you need. It. Why is it the case? I can, look, because I can why is it the case I'm... that you don't require an explanation? <laughs> hold on, hold on. You you just said that you don't need an explanation in the case of high levels of cyanide killing people, but you do need an explanation in the case of LDLC I closing out. Uh, so what's the difference between the two for which you would need an explanation for one and not need an explanation for another? Faulty logic. I don't need an explanation. Well, it is. That's not an answer to the question. No, 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 no. I just say you need it or didn't need it. I'm just saying. In one case, you are accepting the inference as probable without explanation. In the other case, you are not accepting the inference as probable for, without an explanation. So what is the difference? Why, you ex why would you require an explanation in one case and not the other case? I'm just, that's the question. Because I have the knowledge that... Uh, can you hear me? No, I can't hear you. Hang on. I can't hear you. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can hear. You. I can hear you now. Yeah, so the question sorry. on the table, the question on the table is why is it in one case you require an explanation, in the other case you don't? Because I have knowledge that cyanide is quite probably toxic. How do you have that knowledge? How do you know that? Because I've consumed it. Because <laughs> you've consumed it. Yep. Okay, and if you didn't consume it. If I didn't consume it, then I wouldn't know it's mm -hmm. toxic. 
option. And it wouldn't okay, so then you wouldn't. Like, okay, so just to be clear, so just to be clear, if it was the case that you did not consume cyanide, you would be agnostic on whether high levels of cyanide would kill. Yes, I would have no idea. Have you consumed ricin? Ricin? What's this? Have you consumed ricin? No. Okay. Do high levels, do you believe that high levels of ricin kill people? I'll just tell you right now that ricin is actually more toxic than cyanide. Do you, do you believe that high levels of ricin, that high levels of ricin kill people? No idea. Okay. Do you believe that high levels of bleach kill people? If you drank a bunch of bleach, do you believe that would kill you? Yes. Okay, do you know the mechanism for that? Uh, nope. Have you ever consumed bleach before? <laughs> have you, do you have the knowledge of what it's like to consume bleach? Have you ever consumed bleach before, yes or no? No. Hello? No, I haven't. Okay, so we don't, we're not meeting the criteria of you ever having the knowledge of consuming it before, and we're also not meeting the criteria of you knowing the mechanism. So why do you accept that high levels of bleach will kill you? Why do you believe that? Um, because it'll, it's damaged my skin, it's probably not safe. How, yeah, but you don't have, but you don't have the mechanism for that. Again, you don't have, we, we already went through this. You said that in order for you to make a probabilistic inference, you need to know the mechanism, unless it is the case that you've consumed it yourself. You haven't consumed it yourself, and you also don't know the mechanism. No, 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 I didn't Why say do you, you have need the mechanism. I said that I need a mechanism to uh, believe it. Yeah, but, so, but you, yet here is a there case no where mechanism. you don't. Here is a case where, yes, there is a mechanism. <laughs> here is the case by which you do not know the mechanism, or you don't have a mechanism. And there is also a case where you haven't consumed it. You believe it. So again, you're still in a contradiction. Not really, because I can believe yep. whatever I want. Yep. No, but you, but no, but you just based on what you've said, you you were contradicting yourself. You said in order, in order to accept this belief, I need to either a have the mechanism or b have the knowledge that of what it is like to consume it. Here we have the case in which you do have the belief, yet it is not the case that you have the mechanism, and it is not the case that you have the knowledge of consuming it. So those two things contradict each other. I've had it on my skin. I know. So it is, it is and it is not the case that you require the disjunction of having the knowledge of consuming it or... You're having a mechanism. Black and white. And it black is. It is. And like based that. on what you've said, not based a, on what you've said, philosophy textbook. The the required. Listen, listen. Based on what you've said, it is, and it is not the case that the disjunction of those two things are required. So it is, and is not the case that those two things are required. That is a contradiction. You mis you misinterpreting what I'm saying. Listen. What are, are you? All right, mate, you, if you want to clarify, go ahead, clarify. What are you saying? There is no mechanism by which LDL causes heart disease. And how, you do you, how, how, how do you? It. How do you know? How do you know there is no mechanism? Because I haven't seen one. That doesn't mean there is none. Well, according to me, there is none. That okay? How do you know there? How do you know there? How do? You, well, do you have a mechanism for that for that lack of mechanism? Nope, but I'm pretty well, sure. Well, you just said that you need a mechanism in order to make these beliefs. No, I don't. I can believe whatever I want, as I said. Okay, so but but again, why just you acknowledge that just because you are not aware of a mechanism doesn't mean a mechanism doesn't exist, right? Um no, I believe you have to be aware of things for them. So you actually, okay, so you actually have, in order for a mechanism to z exist, you actually need to be aware of it. Is that your position? Yeah. Really? 
Yeah, well, man, there are a lot of mechanisms that have, have just like talk, evaporated from it. reality right now, my dude. Damn. <laughs> If you Holy shit! Talk, like, wait, wait. I just, I just, I just, I just want to, I just want to be clear about what you're actually saying right now. Are you actually saying that in order for a mechanism to exist, it needs to be in your personal mind? And if it's not in your personal mind, it just doesn't exist. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's why <laughs> oh, yeah. you the only one experiencing it, so you wouldn't. Okay. It doesn't no, Okay. So, 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 so wait. I'm just curious, like, so are you saying that, like, for example, let's see. I mean, you, do you acknowledge that there are mechanisms that we are going to learn about in the future? Probably. Well, how could that be the case? Because you are not aware of them now, and so isn't it, doesn't it follow that they don't exist because you're not aware of them? They just don't exist yet. Oh, but as soon as you become aware of it, they will exist. Yes. They'll just come into existence when you're aware of it. That's uh, how okay. reality works. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, all of these mechanisms, you know, like, let me just ask you this, like, when we saw, when we saw a supernova, for example, when you look at the stars and we supernova. There are no stars. And we, You've never seen that in your life. There are, there are, there are no stars. Okay. There's no space either. There's no stars and there's no space. Nope. Okay. And because you aren't aware of it. Yeah, you never say no. Okay, so they don't exist. Yep. Okay. What what else doesn't exist? Let's see. Um do does my backpack exist? Don't know. Well, you no, no, no. It's not that you don't know. It's that you do know because you're not aware of it. Remember, you said you said if you're not aware of it, it doesn't exist. Might as well not exist. Are you are you are you aware of my backpack right now? Now that you tell me about it. Well, you don't know. You're not aware of it because I could be lying to you about it. You could, but it now exists. That concept yeah. exists in my mind. Oh the, no! I'm not asking you about the concept. That's now the you're weaseling. I'm asking you about the physical <laughs> object. No, no, I'm not asking you about it as a concept, as a physical object. As a physical object. Mm hmm. That does, doesn't exist. It does. So my backpack as a physical object does not exist. No. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take a. I'm going to take a picture of my backpack. Okay. And I'm gonna. I'm going to post it in this Discord, and I just want you to know if when, if the moment on your view, the moment my backpack exists, is the moment at which you have seen the picture. Is that what you're affirming? Let's have a look. So again, is the moment that the backpack will exist is the moment you see this picture on your Um, no. Well, well, no. Again, are you aware of the, my backpack it's as a physical an object? Projection. Are you aware of, okay, are you aware of my backpack I right now? I don't know if it's your backpack. I can't identify. It's like, <laughs> you can okay, uh, okay, it does, doesn't have to be mine. We don't have to say my backpack. The backpack in this picture. Like the picture I'm about to send. Does, are you aware of this picture existing? Are you aware of the picture existing? Why did you send it? I didn't send it yet. Are you aware of the picture existing? That doesn't exist. Doesn't it, so the picture not on you. No. Okay, so I'm going to post the picture right now. Okay, here's the picture. And now, is it your view that this picture just came into existence once you saw it? Do you see the picture? 
Yeah, I see a picture. Yeah. Okay, so did when did when? Okay, today at nine fifty three p.m. it was posted. When did the backpack? When did this picture of the backpack exist? When did it come into existence? Uh, the picture six fifty three p.m. On you. Okay, that's when it came into existence. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Well, I have it clearly timestamped in my phone that I took it before then. I mean, you must know that I clearly... I mean, look, you look, you must know that I clearly had to take time to take the picture of it. Like, I, it clearly existed before it hit your eyes. Like, don't you realize that? No. <laughs> so you, it's just your view that it just materialized. This, this is just my reality. That's how how did it, how it works. Are, if I die? Do you do you wait wait? Can you can uh, let me let me ask you this? Do you have a mechanism by which this backpack just ex popped into existence? You sent me a picture of it. No no no, that's not an explanation though. Do you have a mechanistic explanation of how the backpack popped into existence? Um, you uploaded it to um, Discord and I. Well, no 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 no. That's a contradiction. Because if I uploaded it, that was before you saw it, and you already said it didn't exist before you saw it. Now you're contradicting yourself. Well, now it's coming into existence. Well, no, but how could I upload it if it didn't exist? I don't know. Maybe you popped into existence too. Right, right. If I if we just popped into existence, sure. And then the question is, do you have a mechanism by which I popped into existence and the backpack popped into existence? Are you talking about physically? Or are you trying? Any ex any mechanistic any mechanistic explanation for you to have this belief? Not really. Other than okay, but then then why do you then why do you then why do you believe it? I thought we need I thought we need it to be the case where it's a distinction between. Well, so you can see it. I understand you can see it, but if you don't have the mechanism. You don't have the mechanism. And you haven't consumed it. You haven't had the knowledge of consuming it, which were your criteria before. Then you told me that you needed those things in order to have the belief. Uh, yes. Okay. So, so I, is it the case? I, as I said, is I it still the, don't know if that's you. I guess you have sent it to me. Do you, do you, do you accept the no? Do you accept the picture exists? Uh, do yes. you, okay. Do you accept the picture popped into existence when you saw it? Yes. Do you have a mechanism for that? No. Have you consumed it? Have I what? The, cri the second criteria you gave me for believing, you gave me two criteria. The first criteria is knowing what it's like to consume it. The second criteria you gave me was Hang having on, a mechanism. Are you trying to define by which mechanism I believe something? I said I can believe whatever no. the fuck I want. No, 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 no. You, I'm just basing this on what you told me. You told me that you need two criteria in order to make a probabilistic first cri or new two criteria in order to make a an inference. The first thing you said was you need a mechanism. The second thing you said. Actually, not even to make an inference. You said in order to have the belief. First thing was mechanism. Second thing you said was, or I can have the knowledge of consuming it. Now, here is a case but where you have a belief. I can believe whatever I want. So I can believe that bag exists or not. Then it's, then it, wait, if you can believe whatever you want, then it is not the case that in order to have a belief, you need a mechanism. Or knowledge of consumption. For me personally, that's, I would need that's it also that's also in order the, to believe that cholesterol causes heart disease. That's personally look, in order me, in order to look. Listen, listen. Not you like if you're like telling me you can believe thing. whatever. If you if you told me you can believe whatever you want, and if you also told me that in order to believe something you need these criteria, then it is not the case. It is and is not the case. Then you could believe whatever you want. Except you're making the assumption that I. I criteria to be able to make the belief which isn't true you, that's what you've told me. that's what you've that that's what you've told me <laughs> okay. okay look if it is not the case that you need that you need if it is not the case that you need a mechanism then what's your response to the mendelian randomization study for ldlc being causative to atherosclerosis i simply don't believe it why it do you simply not believe why? Okay, but again, we already established that that that's tangential. We already established that you don't need an explanation. 
but I would like one. Okay, but just because you would like one doesn't mean you need one to make to have the belief from the, this inference. So again, what's your response but to the generalization? Do I actually need one to believe that? Why do you why do you need one in one, in one case and not in the other case? Because I get to choose. Because you get what? What I believe in again. Why do you need? Why do you need? Why do you have the belief in one case and not the other case? Why do you believe that you need an explanation in one case and not the other case? Look, because you're accepting. You're I accepting. You're. Ex I know you can. That's not the question. The question isn't if you can. The question is why. Why are you setting up an epistemic standard by which you would need an explanation for an inference in one case and not in another case? The cholesterol causes heart disease. Okay, so how do you explain why the that the how do you explain the findings of the Mendelian randomization study? There is no explanation. <laughs> why? Why is it? Why did they infer that it's causal? Causal from what? Causal LDLC causing atherosclerosis. Why did the Mendelian randomization study infer causality? Don't know. You got a you got a decent amount of data to explain. Well, is there, let me ask you: Is there anything? Is diet. there any? Is there anything that would change your mind? Um, yeah, if you were able to explain how diet affected. Um, well, we already well, well, we already again again listen. We're going in circles. We already established that this isn't like can. criteria you have. <laughs> this isn't a, you, again. Look, do you have an explanation? Of, do you have an explanation of how bleach? Do you have an explanation of how consuming large amounts of bleach would kill you? There's no to that. Do you have? Look again. Why do you again? Why is an explanation required? For me, it's required to believe it because I don't believe. Do you understand how ridiculous it is to require an explanation? To say that you require an explanation to infer causality. No. Why is that? Ridiculous. Because I'll tell you, oh, I'll explain. It's ridiculous because there, because if that were true, then it would be essentially saying that so many of the the classical um, inferences to causality that we've made that have panned out, and we know it to be true validly, that we're invalid for doing so. It would also mean it would also entail that all sorts of ridiculous things that it would entail that you wouldn't be able to infer that drinking large amounts of bleach would kill you because you don't know the mechanism for that. It would also entail that drinking or consuming large amounts of any harmful substance or um, or many different harmful substances would kill you would not be a valid inference because you don't Again, know the mechanisms for those either. You're stuck in black and white reason. No, no. Again, it. Look, I'm just telling you what follows from your fallacy, belief. By the if, way. No, 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 no. I'm just, this is what follows from affirming that we need a mechanism in order to infer causality. If it is the case that we need a mechanism in order to infer causality, then it is also the case that in any instance where we don't have a mechanism, we cannot infer causality, which I on your that, but in my which, mind, yeah, so which, so, so in that case, in that I mean, case, personally, I, I need a mechanism by which cholesterol okay, but, no, which but, 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 you, but, but then you also need a mechanism, then you would also need a mechanism. Do you also need a mechanism by which drinking large amounts of bleach would kill you? Um, no. Why no. not? Why not? Because, because I understand that bleach is, is toxic and I've had experience. Why do you, why do you, under, why do you understand that? Do you have, have you consumed bleach? Have you have experience with bleach? I've just, I haven't consumed it, but I've had it on my skin. And that for me is enough to understand that if I consumed okay. it. And if, I and if you, and if you didn't, and if you died. didn't have it on your, and if you didn't, and if you didn't have it on your skin, would you, would you make that inference? Would oh, you would be have. okay with having that belief? Um, yes. Because, people, Why? because I have knowledge that people have killed themselves on by drinking and consuming bleach. So, so how did, it's but, a good that, idea for me to not do how that. Do you, how, do you, how, do you, how do you have that how do you have that knowledge? I don't know, you hear maybe me? that's just maybe that's just maybe that's just associative. Indeed. Okay, so how do you how can you infer causality? How do I in infer causality? Mm -hmm. How are you inferring causality for bleach?
domain mechanism. How are you inferring causality without a mechanism and without knowledge of that it's just not associative and causal instead? I didn't say that. You said that you need a mechanism in order to infer causality instead of association. I'm asking you, so in the case where you don't have a mechanism, such as bleach, you said, well, I have knowledge about my skin. So I asked you, well, what if you didn't have knowledge on your skin? And then you told me, yes. And then I asked you why. And you said, you have knowledge because of other people killing themselves. And then I asked you, how do you know that's other people killing themselves being just an association, not a causation? And then you didn't know how to answer that. So then it goes back to the original question. How can you infer in the case of bleach that there is a causation and not just an association based on the criteria of the standard that you've provided? Did I, in which case, I didn't have knowledge. How do you don't have knowledge in this case? Well, if I didn't have knowledge that... Um, you don't. You don't. You how do you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know it's... How, how do you know it's, just not, it's not just associative? Is your knowledge that is based on just associative knowledge? I'm not sure why this is relevant. It's relevant because I'm trying to show you why your standard for inferring causality leads to ridiculous conclusions. Why is it ridiculous? It's ridiculous as it leads to the conclusion that even drinking a large amounts of bleach, we can't actually, you wouldn't actually be able to infer that it causes harm. Probably does. How do you, uh, how are you making, okay, now you're changing it to a probabilistic inference. Does that require me a mechanism? Well, that's what I was saying this whole time. Does that require, so no, no, answer the question. Does a probabilistic inference require a mechanism? For me? Yes, for you. Um, no. Okay, then why can't we make the probabilistic inference based on the Mendelian randomization studies for LDLC because causing atherosclerosis? I don't believe it. Why don't you believe it? Because I haven't seen. Don't don't say it doesn't. Ha don't say explanation. No, we already established that your probabilistic inference but doesn't require explanation. You better not say explanation. No, nope, no, nope. you've already conceded. No, nope, you've already conceded that in the You're case of a probabilistic. You already conceded that in the case of Just a like probabilistic you explanation. You believe you have a belief. Nope. Nope. Listen, a... listen, you've already you've already explained in the case of a probabilistic explanation, you've already conceded that in that context you don't need a mechanistic explanation. So sure. So then my question to you is, why is it in the case, why is it in the case of the Mendelian randomization studies that we can make a probabilistic inference? Because I don't believe it. Why don't you believe it? And when you answer this question, please don't say mechanism or explanation, because we've already, you've already conceded you don't need it in order to believe that. So why don't you believe it? Because I really haven't seen any evidence, whereas bleach, I have seen, I have knowledge. That bleach can be harmful. I have zero knowledge. Is, is your knowledge is your knowledge associative? Yeah, sure, you can say that. Okay, but then how do you know it's causal? I don't. Okay, so you're so how do you believe? How do you knowledge. how are you making a prob how do you making a probabilistic inference? How are you because making a probabilistic inference for causality? Yeah, but that could just be associative. But that could just be associative. How are you how are you making a probabilistic inference of causality if you're just based on associative information? Does it does it really matter? You drink bleach, you're probably you know going it, to die. It, how do you know that? That could just be associative. Uh oh. Oh no. Not like this. So what's your point? <laughs> the point is that based on the standard of inferring causality that you've given me, you can't even infer basic things that we all accept to be true. That bleach, drinking large amounts of bleach will cause harm to you. 
So you need to rethink your standard of causal inference, is what I'm suggesting to you. Yeah, and then you can come back after you've gone to the drawing. I want to believe that's that that's whatever. That's that's tangential. That's tangential. To be able to believe something. You, no, I'm I'm working within your framework. I'm working you within saying, your framework of the requirements that you've posited. So what I'm suggesting to you is the 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 framework that you've posited. I'm just working with that framework, and I'm showing you that you could not even conclude basic things that are tr you take to be true. So what you, you need to do is to rethink. You, you need to rethink. Mm -hmm. You should try it. It's, it's it's not. This isn't how life you works. You you should try logic and reason sometime. If you I do can, use I logic can help and reasoning, you. but belief is not uh, something that is done a bad job of it. Mr. Mr. Not to listen, believe. listen, listen. Look, that cholesterol causes heart disease. I know. I uh, the question is not whether you can choose to believe whether cholesterol causes heart disease or not. The question is what is your what is your standard? What is your standard by saying? It, 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 we can make a probabilistic causal inference in one case and not in the other case. And you gave me a standard. I'm just working within your standard to show that based on that standard, one of them you is having an explanation. You couldn't. You couldn't. But you I can still believe even, what I want. You couldn't. You couldn't not even. An explanation. Based. You, that's not the question. It's tangential. Again. So based on the standard you've given, you couldn't even conclude. You couldn't even make a probabilistic <laughs> conclusion that. Drinking large amounts of bleach will kill you. So you really need to rethink your epistemic, rethink that your standard my, of what is that required. That was my conclusion. Do you conclude that drinking large amounts of bleach will kill, will will harm someone? No, I believe it could probably harm or kill somebody. You, okay, and this, and how do you, and and by what, by what, how are you making that inference? How are you making I that knowledge to the damages people? And is that associative? Is that associative? Out. Is that is that associative? Yes. Okay, so how do you how are you making a causal inference based on associative knowledge? Just put two and two together. Again, I can just say that for cholesterol, <laughs> cause and effect, association. So you're, it's, something is just associative, and that makes it cause and effect. Bleach, except bleach is toxic. You drink it. Again, the question, again, the question and then the effect is, you have an association. Yes, yes, so you have an association, and then you have an outcome. So can you infer causality from that, on your view? Probably, yeah, I would say probably. It so you can, that. so it is your view, so it is, is it your view that you can infer causality from association? Sure. Great, so why can't I infer causality from association in the case of atherosclerosis and LDLC? Because you can't explain it. Can you explain the bleach? We know bleach is toxic. How, how, can you explain the mechanism by which it's toxic? How do you know bleach is toxic? It burns. You can't explain it. Can you, ex can you explain it? Can you explain it? It's just, it, it burns. It kills cells. How do you, can cells. You, that's, not an ex, that's not an explanation. Can you explain <laughs> the mechanism by which bleach is toxic? Can you explain the mechanism by which bleach is toxic? It probably kills cells. Yeah, I'm not interested in what it probably Do I does. Know for sure? you explain? No. Can you? Okay, you don't know. So you don't know the explanation. So then that's not going to help you there. It's not going to be a symmetry breaker. It's not going to be a symmetry breaker between LDLC and atherosclerosis and bleach killing someone. So do you have another symmetry breaker you'd like to offer? I don't know anybody who's died in. You don't know I anyone. Anything, I haven't seen anything which has suggested that the cholesterol, the cholesterol in meat is toxic. Okay, so I'm now I'm giving you something. It. Now I'm giving now I'm giving you something. Have you? By the way, have you? <laughs> now I'm giving you something. I look, in that's fact, not a symmetry breaker either. Again, just because it, that doesn't follow, just because we require something doesn't mean high amounts of it doesn't isn't harmful. Do we require bleach? Okay, so there are, there are, okay, do, there we, can, we can do this very easily. Vitamin D, do you accept that high levels of vitamin D are harmful? Uh, they can be. 
Okay, do we require vitamin D? Yes. Okay, so just because something is required doesn't mean you can't get too high of a level of it, right? Sure. Okay, so what's the point of you mentioning that we require it? But there's variables there that would only happen in again, the Just because you require, again, just because you require something doesn't mean too high, high amounts of it aren't harmful. By the way, can you explain the mechanism of vitamin D toxicity? I uh, usually, if somebody's kidneys doesn't work, can't process the vitamin D in it, um, increases no. to toxic levels. What is the mechanism? How, how, yeah, how, do, what's the mechanism by which, by which vitamin D causes toxicity? Um, probably. No, not probably. What is it? I'm trying to remember. Okay. So you don't write, so you currently don't know the mechanism by which vitamin D causes toxicity. Do you, do you have the belief that vitamin high level, two high levels of vitamin D co cause toxicity, that they have harmful effects? Do I know? Yeah. yeah. Do you, studies. do you have the belief, do you have a belief that vitamin D in too high of a dose can cause problems? I mean, unhealthy individual. Yes. Had, and and what's your criteria for knowing that? You don't have an, a mechanism for I've that. I've read some studies. You've read studies? What kind of studies? Are they associative studies? I don't remember. Uh, are they associative studies? No, I think oh. they were mechanistic studies. Mm-hmm. Do you have them? Uh, no, I don't keep them. Okay. So, as you don't have any data right now about, about that, but you see, the point is that you have beliefs that are, you're, you don't seem to be following a framework, an epistemic framework consistently. And the, based on the criteria you've given me for inferring things, inferring the difference between association and causality, you don't seem to be following your own criteria. You just seem to be all over the place here. So well, I think you really I need to go to follow my criteria or not. not, not to right. So you're sure, sure. That's fine. You can posit a criteria and say, well, my criteria is just can be followed or not followed. It just doesn't. I sometimes I follow it. Sometimes I don't. It's just blue and randomly not follow it. Um, you can you can posit that, but it also that makes your criteria pretty meaningless. I think you well, really need to go painful. back. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it could be, yeah, but it's, it, 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 there's no reason anyone else should take that as meaningful. That's fine. And I don't even know why you should take it as meaningful if you randomly follow it. Anyway, I, just don't, I, just don't uh, I think cholesterol causes heart disease. I know, and it doesn't seem like anything would. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't seem like you're giving a consistent criteria for what would change your mind. Well, for that specific case, I need an explanation. Otherwise, I won't believe it. Yeah, is there any reason why in that specific case you need an explanation and not in other cases? Uh, because I have reason to believe. Um, in no, basically. Okay, so so all I'm all I'm saying is that is a crazy view, and the reason that is a crazy view is because any anything that we can infer in the future for which we don't know by these same me methods, we would have to reject causal inferences without a mechanistic explanation. That is an insane view. Why it would is it mean, insane? What's your definition? Yeah, yeah of sure, 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 sure. It's it's insane because, well, it's insane because it would lead to we would have to conclude that a whole bunch of things that everyone takes for granted and that it is trivially true that are actually harmful that we can't actually conclude that because we don't have an explanation. And it follows in the future that when we discover new things by these methods and we don't have an explanation for the mechanism yet, we're going to discover things that are going to be harmful in the future. We're not, we don't have all the knowledge of everything that's harmful. We're going to discover poisons that we haven't discovered now. And we're not going to know the mechanism. But we are going to have some data on them by which we can make inferences. And the fact that we're not going to have the mechanism to understand it is not going to be relevant. You don't need to understand the mechanism to understand that there's a, to infer that there's a causal pathway to a harmful effect. Well, if you're talking science, that is true. But no, me no yeah, yeah, if you're talking, but that's what we're talking. We're talking science. This is, I, I was under the impression we were having a scientific conversation, or at least trying to. 
<laughs> not really. I don't base my oh, okay. scientism. Scientism. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I mean, then I'm not sure what else I can discuss with you. Uh, if, if you're not going to, if you're just going to, look, oh, if you're just going to say so my beliefs are my beliefs and, and, you know, scientism is just, you know, I'm not going to subscribe to, what, what is there else to con- converse about? We haven't really shown that the, the vegan diet is... Uh, an there's diet. nothing I could do to show it. It's just your beliefs. If, what, you, if there's no, what, what would you posit? What would you posit I show? What would you posit I show you? Science? You've already rejected that. Show me where you can get vitamin B12. What? What? what why? Through the scientific method? Why would I? In, why? In food. Look, look, look. Do you reject science? Do you reject the scientific method? Unnecessarily. Oh, so in, in some cases you do? Yes. Which cases do you reject the scientific method? Uh, it's based on empiricism. Uh, which method, which cases do you reject the scientific method? I'm, I'm not going to go into it, dude. Like, it's a long conversation. Look, which cases do you reject the scientific method? On empiricism. That's not an answer to the question. Okay, but do you reject the scientific method? Okay. Needs to be would you? Would you? What is? What is? What is empiricism? It's uh, basically the study of material reality, physical phenomena. <sighs> it's a, okay. Do you? Here's my question to you. Um, what separates that from everything? Related to science, like what? What? So, if that's how you're defining empiricism, why would you just deny all science? Why wouldn't I? Yeah, because it's not perfect. It's not a perfect system. No, that's not what. It, that's no, no. Listen, look. Define empiricism. <laughs> I already have. Okay, then why does that why does that definition not lead you to rejecting all science? You said you reject empiricism. I have to reject it. You just said you do. I don't I don't see how this supports your argument that the vegan diet is the most is, uh. is uh, adequate for humans. Again, again, I'm just, I'm just showing you how your view leads to crazy conclusions. That's all. How your standard, oh, crazy, accepted. crazy, because again, by just about by everyone listening here, and everyone, that's, that's probably just almost everyone who listens. Well, again, I'm not saying that makes it wrong. I'm just saying that. Look, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, you can be a solipsist or whatever. You can, you can reject also reality external to your view. You can, you, you can reject other minds. You can. You can do all these things, but there's not there's not really much of a point of me conversing with you at this point. Because what can I possibly show debate. you? You admitted that you can't get what you need on a vegan diet. You can't get well. No, that that evolved. wasn't the that wasn't the debate proposition. I never agreed that that, you that have was low the debate. levels of omega three. That doesn't irrelevant. Please. Listen, listen, listen. We never. We never agreed to a debate proposition that I could get B12, so I haven't lost that. We never established, we never established, we never established what was, we never established what was the requirements for a, for a deficiency in omega-3s, so you haven't made that case. In fact, and then you've come out and you've denied science. So I don't know what I can give you. What can I possibly give you to change your mind? Um, show me that the vegan diet is... How could I do? How could I do that if you reject science? What would I do it with science? Show me that you can get B twelve. How could I? How could I? Even I have already, I've already admitted that we can't. But even if I, we could, how can I? How can I? How could? No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. How could I possibly do that? You're asking me. What would I show you? Would I show you data? If you reject data, how could I? What am I going to show you? But it doesn't matter if you show me. You've already, right? Already what could I possibly it. show you? How could I possibly do that? You've, what, what am I going to show you? What, why, why would we have the conversation? Show me, show me why you're... How can I show you? 
You've rejected science. How can I show you? If you reject, you're just you don't gonna... need science to explain why you're vegan. Okay. Then what am I gonna what am I gonna show you? Show what me am the I gonna show you why how you're vegan. How can I show it to you? Look, if show you're me. asking me you're asking listen, if you're asking me to show you that you can get a certain amount of nutrients on a vegan diet, how could I show you that without appealing to some sort of science? You can just tell me in your own reasoning. My own reasoning is science. That's not your own reasoning. That's yes. Philosophy. That's 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 no no. That's <laughs> look. If get example, can you get adequate amounts of retinol from beta carotene on a vegan diet? What am I going to present to you other than some scientific data for that? Like what? What do you? What do you expect me to present to you? Your reasons for supporting yes. the vegan. Yes, and and what do you expect those reasons? And what do you expect those reasons to be, if not scientific reasons? Maybe ethical reasons. Maybe ethical I don't know. ethics. No, I can't, that's just a category error. You're giving you giving me a normative a normative reason for a descriptive claim being true. That doesn't even make sense. So you're not vegan. The pro- look, vegan. the proposition is not a is not normative. The proposition is just descriptive. It's, it's a proposition is, it is the case that on a vegan diet, we can get sufficient amounts of retinol from beta carotene. That, why would I give you a normative reason for that? That doesn't even make sense. Are you even vegan? There's no, no, there's no ought. So what am I going to present to you for that prop- to support that proposition other than some scientific reasoning? What other reasoning would I have? What about your own reasoning? Actually, adopting a vegan diet, supporting it, and believing that it's uh, nutritionally sufficient. What could I possibly present? What reasoning could I possibly present for you, to you other than scientific reasoning? Why don't you want to kill animals? Why don't I want to kill animals is a different question. Eat, why don't you want to eat animals? Okay, we can get into that, but I would like you to answer my question about what, what could I possibly present to you. Well, a valid reason why you should why you should be stopping yourself on a vegan. What could I possibly present to you with respect to the description? What can I possibly present, if not scientific reasons? Logic and reasoning. It's an empirical question. The like question is empir- so the, it's an empirical question. And what can I present to you other than an empirical re- empirical evidence? You're it's not a question. Athlete. It's not a question that you can just you can just derive <laughs> logically. You actually have to go out in the world and make observations. Yeah. What are your own observations? How 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 it's through it's from the data other, or or rely on other people's observations with peer reviewed evidence. That's not going to tell so you anything. What could I? What could I, what can I possibly, then what can I possibly give you? You're asking me an empirical question and you're asking me to answer it through non-empirical means. But this is, this is a debate, so I want to come up with It reason. doesn't matter what, if it's a debate or a conversation uh, or whatever it is. Look, look, you're asking so me an empirical question and you've rejected and you've been rejected empirical evidence. So what are you expecting me to give you? A contention at least. I don't even know yeah. how, what I don't know how I would communicate with you even. You don't you don't know We're not, contention. How could I contend with you if I if you if you the contention is on an empirical issue and you reject empirical evidence? Aren't you the one that asked for a debate yet you don't have an argument contention? You were the one who came you were the one who came here. Let's <laughs> look, look, I think I think you're you're lost. You're, no, you're, I'm not you're I'm not lost, lost at all, man. <laughs> you're you're very lost here. I'm perfectly you, you can reject on a me based If you want look animals. you've rejected you've re- you've rejected you've rejected empirical evidence and you're asking me to present to you some form of reason other than empirical evidence for empirical issue. You, I don't know what to say. Provide whatever you want. All right, yeah. is there anything else? Is there is there anything is that all? I think I think we're I think we're done. Reason. I'm sorry buddy. You can't do it. You can't do it. I think, all right, you can go back. You're going to have to go back to the drawing board on this one. I'm sorry. Because you don't have a reason. You're going to have to go back you to the drawing board. You can yourself vegan. 
ethically. I think wrong. I think you have to. I you think it, I think I you think don't care about here. nature. I think it's over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Luke. I'm sorry, Luca. I'm not going to be your father this time. Why are you vegan? Oh, I'm vegan for ethical reasons. Oh, oh now you say you got some. Well, now that's not what we were debating. Reason. I'm just. Yeah, uh, no, no, that's not what we were debating. I'm happy to debate you on that. But Why if you want to know, to if you want to cure. I'm happy to debate you on the ethics too. It's getting late though, to be honest. Um, we can have the ethical debate tomorrow if you'd like. <laughs> Would you like to have the ethical debate tomorrow? Oh, I'm good. I don't think it's a lot. <laughs> you so want to have the ethical? Luke? Luke? Would you like to have There's the no ethical debate tomorrow? Debate. Lost the debate within 15 Loki. minutes. Loki! Loki! Do you want to have the ethical debate tomorrow? No, nah, no, nah, I think we're done. I got other things to do. Okay. All right. Have a good one, buddy. I love you. See you, bro.